Welcome back to another episode of Creepcast. Today we are talking about 1999, the creepypasta. Also, it's known as either Caledon Local 21 or Mr. B- Mr. Bear Cellar. Yes, yes. Right? Y- yes. Yeah, so, right. Uh, 1999, one of the uh, classic uh, internet creepypastas. It's gone on to inspire a lot of other uh, internet horror stories and things like that, as I'm sure you'll pick up on as you read through it. But this is one of the OGs. If I remember right, uh, the first post was made in 2009, and it was continued to be updated until 2011. Although it had its big resurgence around like 2013, 2014, when a bunch of horror YouTubers started to make um, the, like audio videos about it. People like Mr. Creepypasta, Creeps Mix Pasta, and stuff like that. So 1999 has definitely like inserted itself into the the, the quote-unquote important early creepypasta works yeah that cultural zeitgeist of just inter- like pivotal early internet horror stories yeah. pretty cool. which 2009 is very early yes yeah yeah it's, it's one of the earliest ones uh, i remember this being one of the first ones i heard about when i started like getting into it myself uh and there's good reason there's good reason it's uh it's a very interesting story that i of course am not familiar with at all yeah, I want, as is per usual. I, actually, I feel like it has to be a continuous theme here. I have never heard of this. <laughs> I don't know what this is. So once again, going in blind. If anything, this is just this is all it is. It's like basically internet uh, horror historian and then random man off the street is what this <laughs> podcast is, is is become. Hey, well, you get to enjoy all of it for the first time. Now, I will say with this episode, I actually I'm actually not familiar with 1999, so this will be uh. This, th- yeah, th- this will be uh, an interesting episode for me, I think. Um, so I'm definitely excited to uh, see how this one goes. So I'm interested as well. I'm right there with you. I'm stoked. Well, without further ado, let's get into it. Which it starts off by saying, in quotes, The year is 1999. Let's go. I'm so excited. Also, to everyone who is here, remember to keep doing the thing you're doing on audio platforms because more people keep finding us over there, and that's pretty cool. So uh, if, yeah. you, if, you want, if you want to keep that up, thanks. If not, well, I don't care. Well, I support. I, I just like when people listen to us regardless, but the, the audio platforms on Spotify and Apple Podcasts, they've, the numbers have been awesome, and we've been seeing a lot of positivity there, so... If you want to, go go give us a listen there and give us a nice little rating and stuff. It means the world to us. Absolutely. Mwah. You all are fantastic. Hugs and and I, I like, you know, sometimes I'll be talking in Hunter about the show and stuff, and Hunter's like, I just can't stand, you know, these people who watch our videos and talk about us and make edits <laughs> of us and stuff. I just I just wish no, I, no, could, no. I could grab their tender little necks and just break them and it'd just be over. And I'm like, no, these people, they're, they're important to me, and you all really are. So I appreciate that. It's true. I, and I want to say to all of the, which actually I, I, I want to clarify and say, I did not say any of that. Yeah, I say, he said they, it's they, true. You heard him. He said it. He said it. No, 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 no. All of the fan edits and stuff have been really, really funny. And we want to say, I, 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 we, we, I check out the Reddit and stuff and see all of the, the memes going on there and all the different kinds of edits too. And it's really, really, really cool to see. So I, I look forward to all of them. So please keep making them and making my belly jiggle with laughter. Yes, and um, I'm not going to add the part about making his belly jiggle because that feels weird, but keep making me laugh <laughs> in a normal way. <laughs> 1999-2, is th- th- this, is, this is peak Limp Biscuit. so if, at, at some point there is some kind of Limp Biscuit reference, I'm going to be very, very excited. <laughs> I will say I one, th- this has nothing to do with 1999, but one time I was reading, uh, I think I read it, on str- no, it was for a video. It was this uh, online ARG called the Hypnagogic Archives. And there's a part where characters in whatever year um, Smash Mouth's Astro Lounge came out. Um, so it's it's whatever the characters in whatever year that is. And he's like, hmm, reminds me of the hit song All Star by Smash Mouth <laughs> like, midway through the story. <laughs> So I'm sure that we'll have a moment like that in this story. Don't yeah. you worry. Yeah, it's going to be. A, it's like the guy wrote it and he was like, this is a timeless reference. <laughs> this will this never, is ever be a age. bop forever. <laughs> it certainly won't wind up in a popular DreamWorks film and ruin its <laughs> reputation forever. <laughs> yes, yes, <I'm>, yes. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's get into it. I'm so ready. Let's begin. I am too, man. 
The year is 1999. That sentence brings me back to my senior kindergarten class when I was five years old, where we used to read out the date on the blackboard every single day. The year 1999 exists as a stain in my mind. However, as a memory that will not go away no matter how I try to forget it. 1999 marked the year I lost my first tooth, my first time on a plane, and unfortunately, the early loss of my childhood innocence. The one memory that refused to be wiped, it all started with that new or old TV. At the time, Pokemon was the latest fad to hit the school. Pokemon cards, games, stickers, and the most popular, the TV show. So, of course, every time I came home from school, I would stay glued to the TV until Pokemon came on at 5. The only problem was that my dad watched the news at 5.30, and Pokemon episodes were back-to-back, -back, which meant I had to miss an episode every day, something I whined on and on about. My dad got tired of hearing me complain every day. That must be why he went and bought another TV. My dad put the TV he bought in my room. Unfortunately, it was just an old, small boob tube, with rabbit ears even. It also only had 20 channels available, not including the channel Pokemon was on. I recall I didn't care though. I was just thrilled I had my own TV in my room. After surfing through the channels, I came to the conclusion that only channel 2, TVO Kids, was worth watching, so I watched that for a while. It wasn't for another few months until I discovered channel 21. One day in April, I was flipping through the channels, trying to see if Pokemon was on. I pressed channel 21 into the remote, hoping there were more channels. And to my delight, there was. My dad was surprised too, but he let me watch it because it seemed to have kids' programs on. The channel was called Caledon Local 21, and later I found out it was indeed broadcasted from the town of Caledon, Ontario, a town very close to my city. The shows I saw on Caledon Local 21 looked poorly made, and I never understood what was going on in them half the time. However, as I grew up, every time I thought of that channel, I realized more and more how messed up the shows were, and I had to ask myself... Oh, this is a quote. Do you want to do the quote? Oh, sorry, yeah. I want to take it from you. What the fuck was I watching? Thank you. I don't, there's not a ton of quotes in this story, yes. so I don't want to rob you of that moment. Of course. Yeah, I appreciate it. <laughs> And then after that, we get into our first show. But so far, what do you think of it? How are you feeling? I mean, it's it feels similar to I that that Channel Zero thing, kind of about like uh, some kind of show or some kind of like um, archetype where children are watching a you know some kind of various programs, and it's a lot more fucked up than what they remembered, or even mm -hmm. like as kids, it might have messed with them. It's kind of the direction I'm going, but I, I'm not sure. It reminds me, like, premise-wise, it reminds me a lot of uh, Candle Cove. Uh, yeah, can there you go, Candle yeah. Cove, yep. Because that was the whole thing, was that was like the pirate one, right? Yes, yeah, the, the whole thing yes. is that all these kids remember a show, but then their parents are like, oh no, whenever you were staring at the TV, it was just static. Mm -hmm. Like, the, the end twist is that the, the television was, like, transmitting these signals straight to them. That one's written by Chris Straub, and he's, like, a whole... He's, like, one of the Mount Rushmore heads of early internet horror. So, like, that, that he, I think he's incorporated it into some of his other writings and stuff like that. But, yeah, the core premise of the original Candle Cove story reminds me a lot of 1999. I even just like the theme of like coming home from school and wanting to to watch something obviously we haven't gotten into it but i like the idea of like it's a very intimate moment or like yeah. that even i remember that coming home and it's like your kind of like ritual that you do and like the relationship between you and these shows is something where it's like you know therapeutic cathartic all kinds of different uh feelings and then to kind of put that twist it's, it's just fun yeah I, I, I always i always just like that but I'm, I'm stoked i agree all right so let's get into the first one april 1999, Mr. Bear Cellar, episode 12. Very sketchy name if you were to look at it nowadays. The show featured a guy wearing a bear mascot costume who would get a new visitor into his cellar every day. Oh, it was God. Old... <laughs> God. God. <laughs> Good Lord. <laughs> Oh no! And not the next, not the next abbreviations. Here we go, Hunter. Are you ready? <laughs> I guess so, dude. Good lord. Uh, it was always a kid. 
Always a kid, huh? It's always a oh. kid. So here we go. <laughs> the train, the Baraska train is in <laughs> station <laughs> once again. <laughs> God. It was always a kid. The show was filmed with a camcorder and not a very good one either. The police asked me a lot of questions about this show. This episode started with Mr. Bear sitting at a table playing checkers by himself. He sat there playing for a bit until there was a knock on the door. The camera was then looking up the stairs at the door where there was another knock. Mr. Bear climbed the stairs and opened the door to reveal two young children. One was a boy about my age and the other was a girl who looked about eight. Mr. Bear danced in delight and then started talking to the kids. I couldn't hear any of them that well. I remember Mr. Bear then led the kids into the cellar, which was quite dark, only lit by a small oil lamp on the table. I can't really remember that much more, except him singing a song which I couldn't hear too well either, probably because of the large bear mask. The episode ended with them playing hide and seek, with the kids hiding in a closet and Mr. Bear counting. Oh my lord. <laughs> How you feel? Oh so my hard lord. Hard? Okay, I'm, I'm not gonna lie, that kind of, I was like... I got like a, I got a bad taste in my mouth. I, I, I felt a little something crawl up my spine there. You know what it made me, immediately made me think of aesthetically was like the Poughkeepsie tapes. Like that yes, kind of yeah, yeah, the Poughkeepsie tapes. It's like the very, the very infamous one where it's like yes. the, it, the, 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 it's like uh, the guy crawling down the steps in the basement and stuff, all that kind of stuff. Absolutely. Also, how cryptically vague everything is. Also, it's like I, like recalling these things. It feels like it's like recalling a dream or something. It's just ugh. We don't know the intentions yet, you know what I mean? And it makes it so much worse. That's one of the most effective parts about the story to me, is that, like, it's all relayed through just what the kids saw. So all of the intentions and things like that, you're kind of left to ponder with yourself, you know? Um, yeah. Because there's something so menacing about that ending, too, that they were playing hide-and-go-seek, and the kids were hiding in the closet with Mr. Bear counting. Um it's it's you can it's like what happens you know after the cameras go off right if that's where the episode ended yeah well i mean one thing that caught me was that was one sentence there which is just the police asked me a lot of questions about this show just that one little thing right there of like introducing a whole other story element of like okay obviously there's some kind of investigation going and like other people must have heard about this thing you know what i mean like it adds like a whole new layer of uh of, of, of intrigue or just like an, another layer of depth to the story, which I think is just really cool. Yeah. yeah. But also too, just the, I mean, like, you know, Mr. Bear, you know, the, obviously the child, um, aesthetic mixed with horror is mm -hmm. as old as time itself, but still just the idea of an adult, what I'm assuming is an adult in a bear suit doing this is just f fucking mortifying. Yeah. Oh, I should also mention, um, for you to suffer even more there's been a bunch of people on youtube in the years since this got popular who have made um videos of all of this happening so it's like an actual camcorder footage of a guy in a bear suit like running around with kids and stuff like that and it's exactly as awful as you could imagine oh well, well dude that, that kind of like leads perfectly into the uh we just f somebody sent um isaiah or uh Windigoon the Ted the Caver, the Ted's Caving Journal mm -hmm. thing? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was... We just wanted to give him a shout-out, too, and we'll put his link in, to his uh, channel in the videos, but it is unbelievable. So good. Yeah, so this dude... I haven't watched it yet because I'm going to watch it on stream. I'm saving myself for the stream audience. Uh, but this guy showed up in one of my live streams and said, Hey, I heard your all's episode you did over on uh, Papa Meat about Ted the Caver, and I decided to make it into a series. And the series looks fantastic. Um, so yeah, did really cool that he did that. We'll throw it down in the description, but yeah, lo love seeing creativity like that. Yeah. All right. Well, I mean, let's keep moving on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep rocking with it. But before we continue with the show, I want to take a quick moment to thank today's sponsor, Aura. If you're anything like me, then you've probably used your name, address, email address, and password all over the internet without thinking much of it. And while sure, that can certainly make life easy, it also makes it easy for bad people to get away with doing bad things with your information. I mean, recently, AT&T revealed that over 73 million customer records were just released onto the dark web. And all the things they recommend to keep that from happening, like monitoring your account or strong passwords or fraud alerts, are all taken care of 
by Aura. Aura will expose identity brokers who are using your information and automatically submit opt-out requests on your behalf. Anytime you use your information online, there's a chance that some of that data can fall into the hands of telemarketers or robocallers or some other kind of scam. And these data brokers that hold on to that information are legally required to lose it if you ever ask them to. However, the process to do so is very convoluted and tricky because that's how the scam works. But Aura is here to throw a wrench in that. Aura scours the web to see if any of your information has fallen into the wrong hands. And with the click of a button, you can say that you want the scammer to lose your information and Aura will do the hard part and submit the opt-out request on your behalf. Not only will this make your identity more secure, but it will also opt you out of things like telemarketer calls or junk mail lists. Aura even monitors your email and passwords to see if they were a part of a data breach and then gives you advice on what to do from there. When I first started using Aura, I found out that my personal email had been a part of a data broker scam since 2022. And thanks to Aura, I was able to get that cleared up all at once. So as a personal endorsement, thank you, Aura, for not making me go on whatever journey that was about to be. On top of that, the Aura app has a VPN, a password manager, real-time credit and identity theft monitoring, and it even protects your devices from malware. The Aura app even has family tools, like preventing harmful websites from popping up and monitoring screen time. Aura is pretty much every internet safety tool you could ever need in one app. The internet can be a good thing, especially when you use your time on the internet to support whatever harebrained scheme I come up with. So let Aura be your shield from those who want to make something bad out of all the good. And right now, there's never been a better time to get in on this offer. That's because if you head to the link in the description at aura.com creepcast, you'll be able to try Aura for two weeks absolutely free. That is right, 14 days of Aura for free. Sadly, you're probably going to be surprised by all the information they find of yours just out there on the internet. But with Aura, you can get that taken care of, and with the offer in the description, you can give them two weeks to prove themselves. Again, that's head to Aura.com slash Creepcast to get in on this fantastic internet defense tool today. Thank you all so much for watching the ad. Thank you so much to Aura for sponsoring the show. It really does mean the most. Hope you all check them out. Link is in the description, and we are back to the episode. May 1999. Soup and Spoon. I don't think this was even a show. I think it was more of a special movie thing. All I know is I stopped watching Caledon Local 21 for a while because I thought this show was too stupid, especially since Pokemon now came on at 4.30 and 5. I don't remember much of this, but it showed a can of soup and a spoon both attached to strings swinging back and forth, as if someone was holding them and dangling them in front of the camera. Interestingly enough, the show was shot in a basement, which looked just like the one used in Mr. Bear's cellar. Like I said, I can't remember much. The only thing I can remember clearly was the end. The entire thing was only half an hour, and just included stuff I found stupid, such as the spoon chasing the soup around, trying to eat him. Uh, the ending showed a table and about seven kids sitting around it, each with a bowl of soup in front of them. They were sitting and looking at the camera, but with confused almost frightened faces. The cameraman then yelled at the can of soup in front of the kids and said, Spoons ready? And then it just stopped. Interesting. Well, it's definitely setting up a theme here of a, obviously some kind of child abduction thing, but obviously like this weird 30 minute like puppet show is almost how I would describe that, right? With a, yeah. like the spoon and the, the soup, uh, a weird puppet show. I do like the, uh, I do like the line, uh, I thought the show was too stupid, especially since Pokemon now came on at 4.30 and 5. <laughs> you know, like a, a kid just looking at this, he's like, what the hell is this? <laughs> what the hell? This is dumb. <laughs> he goes to the living room and watches Ash, a 12-year-old boy, like tackle Scyther or something like that. He's like, now, this is awesome. Now, this is what I, this is what I need to be watching. I, I, I think it's pretty... It works for me because a lot of the times, you know, oh totally with, with a with a story, you're trying to find ways to hide information from the characters and have it just being a kid who like wasn't interested because he didn't realize how off putting what he was looking at was, um, and said he just wanted to watch Pokemon. So that makes sense why he only saw some of it one time, right? Um, it works. It works for the story. It does, and I mean, I think the entire the, like one thing that's been really effective so far is just these really strong like last three or four sentences. Yeah. Of each of these descriptions, like the ending showed a table and about seven kids sitting around it, each with a bowl of soup in front of them. Just it's so simple, but just so like unsettling. 
So just it's e eerily unsettling. It's one, it's one of the, like, I, d I don't know how much of it was intentional on the author's part. I think a lot of it. But sometimes I feel like even the the quick delivery of the sentences, like how immediate they are, like it's very factual from the kid's point of view, goes to better serve the idea it's a kid who's not really processing what he was looking at. Because, mm -hmm. like, if you or I found a local television show that was, like, in a basement with children, it would immediately be, like, red alert. But the kid just kind of watched it and was bored by it, which is it's so menacing. Well, I mean, I, I mean that's what I, I'm even thinking about. If I was a kid, I'd probably be doing the exact same thing. Yeah. I mean, I'd be, I'd, I'd be looking at, like, my Dragon Ball Z DVD thing and being like, why the fuck am I watching this stupid <laughs> shit? I could be throwing this in my PS2 and just, like, living La Vida Loca. You know what I mean? Like, but especially, that's just, like, the mind that that's just, like, the interest thing of like the mind of a child where yeah. it's just like you don't have those like those those like actual being able to process like shit that you're seeing it's just like all surface level so you're just like well this is boring but you don't understand like how even, even to the extent too, to where it's like there why would you ever bring it up to your parents yeah. you know what yeah. i mean oh that, that show's stupid you know well why why would you just tell an adult a yeah. puppet show yeah exactly exactly i also think that to me that's one of the most frightening concepts you can do in horror not just like involving kids but specifically involving like your memories around childhood like did those things that happened to you actually happen the way you think you did or are you just misremembering well right? yeah i mean that the that, idea, that messes the, with me a lot the, yeah and i think the idea that it's like you can't even trust yourself in your own narrative yeah i think is yeah extremely disturbing extremely yeah. disturbing it's like the especially like dementia like me getting dementia when i'm older which i know it's gonna happen and i'm very bummed about it i just i can feel it i i i think like it's the idea that's like you can't even remember or you, like you're losing track of your own self or you can't even trust yourself is so frightening yeah yeah it looks interesting here too because that went from april may and the next one's in july so he skipped a month yeah so the, so the, 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 the time is like, becoming a bit more sporadic yeah so these are like his memories of like i remember this from april i remember this from may mm -hmm. so now it's what he remembers from july so the next one july 1999 he says it was summer and i hadn't watched channel 21 for a while until one day when i slept over at my friend's house and i decided to check it out again my friend had gotten a TV in his room for his sixth birthday, so we stayed up very late. For us, 9.30 was very late, and watched TV. That's when I remembered Channel 21 and brought it up to my friend. We decided to see if it was on, and to our surprise, it was. They must have changed the broadcasting time. Now, a couple things mm. to mention here. Uh, yep. For one, six way too young to just have an unrestricted tv <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah well do, 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 do you think so in the era before internet's really readily available i mean but before this time people that had their own tvs and stuff i mean like it was probably like oh you just can't have like a vcr or something to like watch bad movies or something but even okay, then it's like right, what, right. what was going to be on tv you know what i mean i'm just I'll, trying I'll, to... I'll give you that that in 1999 having a tv that showed like local PBS or whatever was very especially different. yeah because nowadays kids are channels. gonna find creep cast and gonna find you know us talking about like child abductions all kinds and of whatnot crazy and, shit yeah, yeah, yeah yeah we can't be having that also here too uh, I just want to say that it's interesting where he said earlier that the broadcasting was from four to nine and then he's like nine thirty oh they must have changed the broadcasting time yeah no yeah. I think it's definitely yeah. just whenever you flip it on it's gonna it's gonna be there for you <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean yeah absolutely. Um, so this, oh this... shit, it's another Mr. Bear seller. God damn it. <laughs> anyway, I don't like that. Um, they must have changed the broadcasting time. Mr. Bell Bear seller. This was episode 23. This episode was entertaining for my friend and me, mainly because it had swearing. However, now when I think of this episode, I realize something was definitely wrong when it was filmed. The episode started with the camera on its side, while it was facing Mr. Bear, who was walking upstairs to the cellar door. The camera then blacked out for about a second before fading in back upright and facing Mr. Bear. There was also another kid talking to him, but this kid looked about 11 or 12. He was talking to Mr. Bear for a while, but I couldn't hear well, again with the crappy camcorder, until the kid started raising his voice. The kid was saying how it was late and his sister had to go home. You could also hear more voices in the background. I remember Mr. Bear clearly saying, 
Get the fuck out. You're not invited. With a deep voice muffled by the bear mask. I remember my friend and I looking at each other and laughing at the mention of the forbidden F word. But the episode got weirder. The kid began climbing the stairs before <laughs> turning around and saying how he was going to call the police. Mr. Bear began breaking into a run towards the kid. He started screaming and running as well. The camera then cut out, and that was the end of the episode. The channel then turned to static shortly after. I want to say that even uh, if I was a kid and I heard uh, someone say fuck, because, you know, I like the South Park movie and all that kind of stuff from back in the day. If I saw this, I would be horrified. Horrified as a child. To think, like, this thing is just like, get the fuck out of here, you're not invited! And the kids are like, ah! It's so weird to me, dude. I, I will that say is this. so creepy. I will say this. Do you think a six-year-old could be young enough that they wouldn't process... They would still just see a funny bear costume, right? Hmm. Maybe. Is six, no, that's, that, like, that's a good point. the edge of like realizing this is weird? I don't know. Sure. I think kids are smart enough to read body language or to understand that like... One of the people in the room are is clearly upset. I think that it does a good job about it though by saying that like the the all the audio is muffled or yeah, it's like hard to yeah. hear. Um, but I still think I'm I, I'm trying to think about like I feel like I would just be kind of creeped out. I think because it's it's kind of like it is a big bear and it's saying it, like if it was like saying I don't, just because I don't know it's 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 hard to say six is six is very young it's hard it's hard to know I, I, I'll say you're this. just uh, so disassociated from it maybe I don't know I saw I I forget where it was but the other day I heard the line the scariest thing that happens when you're a kid is when an adult suddenly gets very serious uh and, yeah and yeah that always yeah. did freak me out so maybe if that is kind of maybe the tick kids are looking for to get afraid maybe the bear costumes hiding that you know maybe they can't tell um, yeah, like they can't like actually read its body language because it has just like a giant mask on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I will say, the image. I, oh my gosh! <laughs> Here we go, dude. Every I love it. Every episode. Shut up! <laughs> every, every episode. You already. I wasn't thinking about it. I'm busy. I'm bi I'm working, honey. <laughs> every time, dude. <laughs> Anyway. It's Mr. Bear, run! <laughs> Shut up. I can't work under these conditions. Okay. <laughs> I'm freaking out. <laughs> I'm freaking out right now. All right. Yeah. So, yeah. Anyway, scared kids. Yeah. <laughs> I will say, too, that this is, this is like really, I really love this setup with the basement thing. Just as like a visual, Absolutely like terrifying. visualizing it in my, visualizing it in my head. Like even that last one in July. The idea that the camera is like starting off on its side, yeah. like there was some kind of tussle, is what I would assume that it's saying, right? Yeah. Like there was some kind of struggle or something, and the tripod fell over. Mm -hmm. So good. And also, I don't know. How, how, are you picturing the basement? I'm picturing the basement with like, kind of like almost like not dirt floors, but like that really shitty like cracked cement. Yeah. Yep. Maybe like one light. It's kind of dimly, really old. You wooden can hear the constant like low echo of the underground. Yes. You know? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Love it. It's like I'm I'm so in on this bear seller vibe. Yeah, it's so it, it works pretty well. And like, man, that image of him running up the stairs at the kid. Oh, gosh, horrible, it's terrifying. Especially just because of how fucking goofy a, a, a grown adult looks running in those giant ass suits. Yeah, you know his legs are kind of bowed because he can't just like run regular. So it's just it's it's just even more cartoonish and weird. And I, if I yeah, and the kid even screams and runs away himself. And also to not keep dragging this on this part, but also whenever um, he says "get the fuck out," you're not invited. Assumes that there's more people off screen who are yeah. like waiting on this so uh, quote unquote like party that he's throwing or something. Mm -hmm. Weird. Mr. Bear's party. Mr. Bear seller. <laughs> <laughs> August 1999. I didn't want to watch tw Channel 21 after that. In August, I grew more conscious to see Mr. Bear Seller for some reason, though. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm slipping over you singing the good. song. You're, 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 all, you're all scared now. Let's, yeah, I'm, let's all, I'm all riled. You done got me riled. All right. In August, I grew <laughs> more curious to see Mr. Bear Seller for some reason, though. The last episode I saw of Mr. Bear was weird and had swearing which also made me think the show was meant for teenagers. 
Nonetheless, I flipped onto Channel 21 when my dad was busy. That's also profoundly sad, how a kid sees how messed up that is and be like, oh, this must be for the bigger kids, right? Like, he doesn't get Mm -hmm. how messed up it is. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Bear Cellar, episode 28. Apparently, this episode had been playing the entire month of August. It was studied a lot by the police. The entire episode was just Mr. Bear sitting in a chair talking to the audience. Hello, kids. Do you want to visit my cellar? If you do, please write me a letter at this address. The screen then switched to a white screen with multicolored letters reading the address. And that was what remained for the rest of the episode. This repeated for five hours every day until September came. And guess what I actually did? I sent Mr. Bear, or that sick bastard who portrayed him, a letter. I did it out of curiosity mostly. My dad was okay with it because he thought it was a legit kid's show. But then again, he never saw any of what was on Channel 21. So I wrote a letter using my best writing possible. I think I just said how I wanted to meet Mr. Bear. So my dad sent the letter to the address Mr. Bear said on the show. It stayed on all day anyway for some reason. It took about a week to get a response, which I was surprised I did. I still had the letter I received on August the 15th, 1999. The letter read, Dear Elliot, Thank you ever so much for your letter. I would love to have you in my cellar. We play games, watch movies, and go fire camping in the middle of the woods. Come to my house at, the police cut out this address, Caledon, Ontario, Canada. I look very forward to having fun with you. Love, Mr. Bear. I cannot believe my dad never found this sketchy, because he actually took me to the house. And what? <laughs> what? What the f- what? What the fuck? What are you what are you saying? Oh my god! Time time out! Time out, I say a time out, please god! Hold on, hold on. Hold on. My word! What it <sighs> I'm trying to wrap my head around that. He actually took you to the house. Okay, just keep going, and then we're almost done with this one, and we can actually see. I'm so curious okay. to see. And that's when the police became involved. Those <laughs> endless questions, those pictures of terrified kids, the woods. That brings me to why I'm writing this blog. That psycho and his friends did some screwed up shit back then, and now it seems he's trying to get into contact with me again. The entire police thing is coming back. That has brought 1999 back to me. Over a decade later, it is happening again. Oh. Ooh. So now he's going to be 16 in the update here. I will say, okay, my God. My <laughs> God. Uh, Talk okay. about, get this child away from this hold dad, on, by the hold way. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's let's frame it, right? Because we know what's happening, but he said specifically his dad never saw the station, right? So a six year old. He never saw the station, but he is led to believe, sorry to cut you off, he was led to believe that he has read he has read that thing, right? As an adult, if I got a letter in the mail from a a TV studio, (laughs) presumably an adult, and it said, Dear Elliot Thank you ever so much for writing a letter. I would love to have you in my cellar. We play games, watch movies, and go fire camping in the middle of the woods. Come to my house. What? Explain like the dad's just like, oh, I don't give a fuck. Where do you need to go? What's the address? All right, I'll plug it in. I don't give a shit. Sure. Yo, Elliot, get your bag. We're going. He's like, he wants him out of the house. Yeah, I got TV to watch. That's why I bought that TV so I could watch my my shows. Unbelievable, dude! Unbe- even if you've never seen it, I would. Ne- I'd be like, no. Who? Who gave? We're not. To, to, you want to go to a cellar? We're going to. The- and it doesn't even say come to the studio. It says come to my house. He's like, yeah, that seems that that probably makes sense. That's where Jerry Seinfeld he he films his all those episodes in his apartment. So that makes sense. <laughs> Unbelievable! Unbelievable, dude! And then, and then to have the gall afterwards, where it's like he actually took me to the house. You're like. What? And then it says, and then, and that's when the police became involved, is the next sentence, dude. The next thing that is said. 
that, is, that's when the police became involved. Come on! <laughs> the police were there to arrest his dad for Frank. They, they should have! They should have! Sir, this is child neglect. He's like, I didn't know what was going on. I just took... My son tells me to take him somewhere. I take him. I don't think about it. I just take him. I was looking for my dog, Whip. He's around here. I was like... <laughs> yeah, they, <laughs> there's endless questions. And the and, and also here, it, 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 this paragraph ends with, those pictures of terrified kids, the woods, dot, dot, dot. Arrest the dad immediately <laughs> is all I have to say. That is unbelievable. Which I do, I do want to say, I, regardless of how terrible the fucking dad is, is... I like the little over a decade later it's still happening. I love that little yeah, yeah. that little you know dangling the carrot. So actually I believe if I recall right everything we just read was the original post and then everything we read from here on was updates he did in the following months. So oh. everything we just read was where the original story ended. Okay and and but this but the the first one was still posted in 2009, correct? Yes. Correct. Okay, and it was just, this was just him updating. Okay, well, that's yes. cool. Yeah, yeah. All right, so we don't... We, we The next log, ladies and gentlemen, isn't until November 14th of 2009, uh, so I it will, literally hold, is hold almost on, exactly on. I need to run later. slight... Okay, we don't have the, the name of the child, I don't think, but the author's name's Camden Lamont, so I'm going to call the child Camden. I'm going to run slight interference for Camden's dad. Okay. No, it's Elliot. It's Elliot. Oh, he did have a name. All right, I'm stupid. Yeah, uh, yeah. Because Elliot. the bear, he wrote the child, the fucking the six year old right. child. Dear Elliot, you're right. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. I'm dumb. Uh, okay, so El I'm gonna run. I cannot wait. I cannot wait to hear this defense, okay. dude. Okay, <laughs> hear me out, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen of the jury. <laughs> the okay, the father has not watched the program. Correct. Yeah. He has just heard his kid like, oh, I watched this show about Mr. Bear and he plays with kids or whatever, right? He thinks that's uh -huh. all it is. It's a local show, right? Which means it's somewhere around the region. So the kid's like, hey, can I send a letter to this TV show? And dad's like, sure. So he sends a letter. Letter comes back. And yes, while I will admit to the jury that the word um, seller is weird and that probably should have raised an eyebrow... He's also heard that the TV show is called Mr. Bear Cellar. So, say it was like, it was Elmo's Playhouse, right? If the letter said, I want you to come to my playhouse, that would seem normal. The dad didn't send his child in that direction. He was there with him. Like, the dad's like, alright, we'll check it out. And he walks up with, the, with his son, and then the police become involved. Maybe the dad saw something, maybe the police were already there, who knows. Um... But again, I will I will have that slight caveat about it. I just want to say that I have to question now if you yourself are Mr. Bear, <laughs> because that's what that defense sounded like. Because <laughs> I want to say that, sure, he's never seen the show. If I would have sat there, let's say I've never seen Dragon Ball Z, and my kid says, Oh, it's a show about fighting. It's They power up. Sure, right? Come go to Master Roshi's Island, he says. I'm like, well, well that's a weird thing. And then it says, the next line says, come to my house? At what point would I be like, hmm, that's kind of weird. It's shot in a house. Well, yeah, I guess. I also think it's being presumptuous that you said that he's like, because with how neglectful he's been so far, I would almost assume this 90s father is just waiting in the car. All right, I'll be here. Have fun. Hunter, Get on in there. Hunter, those are gruesome allegations, and I don't stand for it myself. <laughs> All I'm saying is I don't... Yeah, I, 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 I believe at some point, and someone will probably pull up this image. I could have sworn that I've seen you with some kind of giant teddy bear mask on, and I just, I, I don't know. I don't know. Also, you are rushing to the defense of <laughs> of, of, of this extremely quickly. I don't know what you're talking about. The defense of what? I just think that he's <laughs> okay, a good okay. father. He's looking out for his... He just he's wants his son to have dad. a good time, okay? That's all I'm yeah. saying. All right. All right. All right. All right. We'll see where this goes, Mr. Bear. We'll see where it goes. <laughs> all right. That's so going to be your new nickname, dude. I'm not going to call... I'm not going to... No longer are you win the good of my eyes. You are literally Mr. Bear, is how I see this. Also, you talked about how you seem dead bodies in real lives and stuff. Dude, Mr. Bear. Mr. Bear. <laughs> okay. I know I'm a YouTuber, but that doesn't mean I'm a pedophile. Let's get that clear. <laughs> <laughs> I know those two often intersect. But <laughs> my line in the oh, sand. Oh, God. All right. 
Um, <laughs> no, no, uh. Update one. <clears throat> November 14th, 2009. People have been emailing me asking what exactly happened in 1999. I'll get to that. Those weird TV shows I was watching apparently were meant to attract kids to Mr. Bear's house. What Mr. Bear did shocked the entire town. My dad actually drove me to Caledon along with the address Mr. Bear left on the letter. The house was actually in the outskirts of the town, in the open farmland. I still remember that house. It looked like an older farmhouse that looked to have been built in the early 1900s. The windows were all boarded up, and the house looked in a state of disrepair. As we walked up to the house, I remember my dad checking I mean... the address over and over again and looking at the house in disbelief. Then the door opened. I'm sorry, did you have something you wanted to add? I just can't believe that. What? The, the, entire, the entire house is boarded up and the dad's like, Is this the right address? Is this right? Okay, well, I guess we'll go in. <laughs> Yo, is this where Kimber's funeral is? Hey, is this where Mr. Bear, Bear Sellers at? Yes, yeah, this is where Kimber's, Kimber's, Kimber's mom. Is. is this where Kimber's yeah. mom's? Funeral? Yeah. <laughs> yo, they got sandwiches in here. Yo, oh, yo. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Anyway, the door opened. I expected Mr. Bear to be at the door. But I was surprised to see a police officer emerge from the creaking doorway. Marcus. Oh, yeah, Marcus, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you, some kind of Mr. Bear hunter? <laughs> I heard there's a big anamorphic bear walking around here. <laughs> just all the story. It's <laughs> just yeah, all falling just in on each other. <laughs> all right, I'll, I'll, I'll stop. I'm starting. Oh, look, I'll there stop. goes Whip. Oh, look at that. That's yeah. uh, oh, there uh, he goes. Oh, do, do we take a ride up here, Bristol? What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have... Hold on. Before we go in the house, let me check my Facebook account. I got a message from my dead girlfriend. <laughs> yeah, my, oh. dad keep, my dead girlfriend keeps messaging me on Facebook. All right, no, we're good. No messages. All right. Wait, wait what's that? Are those giant <laughs> chicken eggs on the porch? <laughs> <laughs> I hope the eyeless lady didn't leave those here. Okay. <laughs> I'm good. I, I think that's all of them. I don't think I, I think that's all of them, yeah. References. <laughs> oh, wait. Be careful. There's some stairs in those woods. So. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Now, now, now we're good. Now we're good. Yeah, now we're good. yeah all right. <laughs> I expected Mr. Bear to be at the door, but I was surprised to see a police officer emerge from the creaking doorway. The officer began talking to my dad while I quickly asked if that was Mr. Bear's house. The officer's face cringed slightly, and he muttered, Oh, God. Did you have to do that in the Wabbit season voice? <laughs> it's just a ring. Like... Oh, God. <laughs> you can do that. <laughs> no, Is that better? Oh, God. Now imagine that stupid... You know, I'm glad they took that video down. Hey, come on, that man. Stupid hey, rabbit. come on. <laughs> in a police hey, officer's God. uniform. We are going to get through this paragraph. Okay, hold on. Yes. Or something like that. He started t talking quietly to my dad so I couldn't hear. Although my dad told me to go to the car anyway. And then we just went home. My dad was quiet the whole way home. I felt something strange had happened. My dad never told me what happened for a while. I forgot about it anyway, too. Channel 21 no longer came on. And when I asked about it, my dad would not acknowledge his existence. I think it was when I was 13 where I learned the truth. I remember Channel 21 one day and asked my dad about it. I guess he finally decided I should hear the truth. Caledon Local 21 was a local TV channel that ran from October of 1997 to August of 1999 in the Peel region of Ontario. The entire channel was made from a house in Caledon, the one I visited, and run by a man who was not really known by anyone in the town. The channel was only available to older TVs because the signal was one only picked up by rabbit ears or weaker frequency. The man created all the shows on the channel, all of which were kids shows. He was Mr. Bear, and he was the mysterious cameraman. The real reason he created the channel was more disturbing than what was originally thought. As you might have already guessed, he kidnapped kids and held them in the cellar. But while most people thought he was a serial child molester, he really wanted to use the kids for another purpose. The day I arrived, 
the man had fled his house the night before. The day before, the police went in for their investigation. I wasn't the only one who was watching. Hmm. Interesting. So they haven't even caught him. No, he's still out there somewhere. Yeah, he's still out there somewhere. Ooh, the, the weird thing too of what do you think his other purpose was? I, I, don't, I don't know, man. It could it could really be anything. Um, what do you think it was? I don't know. I, I can't tell if it's veering into like child sacrifice, maybe of some sort. I'm trying to think of like a seller and that kind of thing. Really, we, there hasn't been that much. I mean, obviously, I, I literally thought it was going to be the. Mol- I thought it was going to be like a molestation, murder. Mm-hmm kind of thing but the uh another purpose makes me think that there's something it just feels a bit more cryptic to where it's like i'm not i'm not sure i mean like it might my immediate other go-to is like oh sacrificial purposes of some sort but i'm not sure i don't know well we'll see we'll continue there's another update <clears throat> so right. his his thing too here is that he updated it so the it jumped from august of 99 to november 14th 2009 mm-hmm. so has he been has he been the consistent age the entire time of has he just been our narrator that's 16 uh, yeah yeah and this is him now in real time he's been our because that it? original post i'm not sure what date it was made uh but it was around it was in 2009 so it's him at 16 talking about the story like what he saw okay. as a kid and now it's him updating after the first post was out okay so our next post uh, is December the 2nd, 2009. Update 2. Sorry for not answering any questions for so long. I haven't accessed my email account for some time. Anyway, let me finally set things straight about what I know. Back in October, I visited the house previously owned by the man who ran Caledon Local 21. Two women lived there, operating a daycare business. How ironic. Now, to answer the questions you guys emailed to me. Question 1. Who else watched Caledon Local 21? I know other people watched it for sure, including those kids who wound up at Mr. Bear's house. After some Google searches, I found a few people on the Neoseeker forums who were discussing shows from Caledon Local 21. They talked about the two shows I watched, but also another two shows I'd never seen before. A user named I Am Real Life seemed to know all the shows that were broadcasted on Channel 21. Here are the two I've never heard of. 1. The Fallen Angel in Life I Am Real Life described it as a fairly boring show about a guy rambling on and on in front of the camera about how we must please Satan and appease him before it's too late. And the second show, Paint with a Soul, I Am Real Life and another user called Siggy92 were discussing this show. They described it as Blair Witch-like, as it consisted of the cameraman wandering around the forest at night, doing nothing particularly interesting. I'll go looking for the conversation and see if I can get the link. How do you feel after that? That first question. Interesting. I mean, I think it helps. It, it, it kind of makes you push to solidifying the idea that there's some kind of worship or some kind of sacrifice um, going on here. Mm-hmm. And then it feels like the paint with the soul thing is definitely him. <clears throat> He's either potentially lurking around other people, like trying to find people or he, there is some kind of thing out in some kind of forest yeah. That he is visiting some kind of altar. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Some kind of worshipping altar or something. I'm not sure. I think what my theory is, is that it was a guy who initially figured out how to broadcast on a local channel no one watched. And maybe he began with stuff like the fallen angel in life, where he's just like, oh, we have to we have to do good for Satan. And then mm-hmm. l- he learns, sort of, that a better way to go about it is the Mr. Bear broadcast, right? That like maybe yeah, and, maybe he could hide himself a little bit, not well, but at least to children. I'm I'm wondering too. Well, not only hide himself to children, but I'm also wondering uh, instead of having to go out and look for people or like, assumably, I mean, like I'm I'm making assumptions here, but um, break into people's houses and steal kids. This yeah. way, it's like they come to him. You know yeah. what I mean? Like yeah. it's much more alluring that way. Um, so yeah. Question three: Where is Mister Bear or the guys who? or the guy who wore the costume. If I did know, I would have said earlier. I have no idea where the guy is, or if he's dead or alive. Hopefully dead. When I see my dad's friend next time, I'll ask him about this. Maybe I can get a more definite answer. And then question number four, what did Mr. Bear do to the children? This is by far the most common question I've been asked. I found this out in October as well, via my dad's friend who is a retired Caledon regional officer. 
Apparently, the man playing Mr. Bear took the kids out of the house and into the forest nearby. What he did there, police are not exactly sure how it happened, but 16 charred bodies of children between the ages of 4 to 13 were found in a 15 by 15 foot ditch deep within the forest. My dad's friend did not want to go into exact details, but I'm seeing him next Thursday anyway, so maybe I can extort more information from him then. That's all I have for now. Thanks for keeping an interest in my blog. I'll try to gather as much information as I can for my next post. I've actually been getting pretty interested in this myself. It should be my right to know what the hell happened. Okay. So definitely some kind of, I mean, seems like he's taking people out there, sacrificing them for something. Now I'm wondering more so my curiosity is leaning into, is there any actual paranormal um, significance that's going to happen? Or is it just a madman? Because yeah. you know what it kind of reminds me of a bit? If you know, uh, you know, Temple OS. Oh, yes. Gosh, man, you just gave me a flashback. But yeah, I'm familiar. Yeah crazy religious guy making something you know and he's just like hunkering down and posting it on the internet but yeah. in the same way it makes me think of like delusional man if it's if it's not paranormal it's like delusional man like weird satanist guy thinks he has to appease probably some kind of weird voices in his brain or mm. do some kind of you know s s something along those lines it the connections are there so i'm now i'm curious to see oh is this going to go into a paranormal direction or not it's yeah. it's it's pretty fascinating yeah, uh, it's it's definitely keeps like so far it hasn't fallen off anywhere, right? It kind of keeps attention. Like, sure, it's revealing stuff. Yeah. Like the children were killed, uh, and there's some reference to Satan, but we still don't know enough specifics that it kind of gives away, right? It doesn't show yeah. its hand too quick. Uh, update four, right? Yeah, update four, January fourteenth, twenty ten. I'm sorry I haven't posted anything for a while. I kind of lost interest in this blog since I hit a standstill while looking for more information about the identity of the owner of Caledon Local 21. However, a few weeks ago, I struck gold. I found some answers, surprisingly from the father of a kid I used to babysit. He lives just across from my street, and I used to look after his kids when they were younger. He currently doesn't have a job either. He used to live near the woods outside of Caledon and witnessed the owner's activities in the woods. His name is Anthony Polo. When he lived in the small bungalow outside the woods, he would often venture in to smoke a joint of marijuana or two before returning to his work as a wood craftsman. Polo described that sometimes he would hear voices of children coming from deeper within the woods, as well as a glowing light off in the distance. Polo told me that these events started in late 1997. No, this is around the time Caledon Local 21 began airing. He apparently became annoyed by this happening every once in a while and actually went to investigate. Polo then described what the whole scene looked like when he got there. There's a group of kids, he said about 13 to 17, and ages 5 to 12 gathered around a large fire pit with a burning fire. With them was a single adult. Polo talked to the man, noting his unkempt appearance of a crack addict as well as his constant twitching, and asked what he was doing out in the forest with children. The man said they were on a camping trip, something they did frequently. Polo, not suspecting anything. <laughs> God, dude. God. You thought the dad was bad? Jeez, I know, dude. Imagine seeing a crack addict looking guy twitching, and he's like, we're on a camping trip. And all the kids are like probably looking at him horrified. And he's just like smoking his joint. He's like, all right. <laughs> Any... This is the lowest crime rate in Canada. <laughs> yeah, the next line's so funny. It says, Polo, not suspecting anything, as Caledon has one of the lo lowest crime rates in Canada. Man, the, the idea of, like, you see a vis like any single father who wants to do crack with his 17 children is a friend of mine. <laughs> Let this we're just camping. <laughs> we're, just, we're, just, we're, we're camping! I'm sorry, I didn't mean to go. I just, I just was... <laughs> I, we're, just, we're, we're just doing that, right? And he's like, the like the person he's like holding one of their hands, like squeezing it really hard. We're just, we're just, we're just having fun out here. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry about that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Well, oh my God, dude. The next, read read the rest of this sentence. All right, next one. Simply left it at that and told them to be quieter. <laughs> Imagine he's like, all right, well, if you guys could stop throwing each other into the the fire here and screaming and crying, and I'd be so nice because I'm trying to. It's so hard for me to think with you guys screaming so much and talking. God, blogging me out, man. Oh uh, anyway, 
Yeah. Uh, the idea of like, like a kid grabs his hand and it's like, please help me, mister. And he's like, will you pipe down? I'm trying to have a conversation with your father <laughs> yeah. here. You're so loud. <laughs> You're so loud. Quiet. I can't even myself think. <laughs> I want to talk to the crackhead. <laughs> Let's make sure you're safe. Who, who is help? That's not my name. Stop asking for him. <laughs> yeah. Ugh. Polo then paused for a while before telling me that they never became quieter. In fact, sometimes he heard loud chanting from the children in an unknown language. Oh my god, <laughs> what? <laughs> Those yeah, crackheads and their children. Uh, uh, oh, I think they're. I think that's Latin, dude. Is that a dead? Is that, is that a dead language? Oh man. Oh god. Oh, oh god. <laughs> he didn't bother meeting with the man again as he was moving. Yeah, away. Well, I'll move. I'm getting the hell out of here. Who cares? He says he didn't bother meeting with the man as he was moving away anyway. What? God, he dude. Didn't talk to that guy. Polo and the man's dad need to be arrested <laughs> immediately. We're in a very tight race for the worst. These the, the worst characters out of a story, like not like not badly written. I just mean like just bad they're people bad that people. deserve yeah, to be in losers. prison. Yes, Polo. yes. There needs to be a tier list. And the the, the next, this is the worst part. Listen, I told Polo that the man was probably the owner of Caledon Local Twenty One, but he doubted it as he heard that the man was moving to Pickering <laughs> by several other residents near that area. Bro, no, I doubt that. No. No, I doubt it. So anyway, uh, yeah, I was in the woods and I found these 17 children ages uh, 5 to 12 with this one man around a fire pyre. Oh, that sounds like the police case of the man with 17 children aged 5 to 12 around a fire. No, it doesn't check mm. out because I heard that guy, uh, someone told me he moved. <laughs> no, I have it on pretty good authority that that guy's left, so probably not that. I think you need to check your records because the ones I knew were chanting Latin and cutting themselves in a family-friendly fashion. Not yeah. This plus, those kids were bleeding from their eyes and chanting Latin, so I think they're like they're they're sharp cookies. Like I doubt that was them. I think they could have. I think they could have fought that guy off if that was him. I so I think that was their dad, and he just really liked crack. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Who doesn't like a little hit of crack every once in a while? God, not a big deal. Good Lord. Here's what I know now. The man would take the kids into the woods regularly for, quote, camping. The fire pit Polo described may be the hole the bodies of the children were found in. The children Polo saw are probably the ones found dead. <laughs> probably. Okay. Yeah, well, I, like, I like all these, like, may be the hole the bodies were found in, and Polo saw... The children are probably the ones found dead. It's like, uh, I didn't, you know, hey, don't think we need to be in fucking inspector gadget to realize that, yeah, these are, these are the people that, but, like, I mean, you know, I mean, come on, man. It reminds me, I can't remember what it was. I'll send it to you if I can find it. But there was this YouTube video I watched one time where they were trying to prove this guy on TV was an individual who had a criminal record, right? So he mm. shows the two side by side and they're clearly the same person. But then he spends 10 minutes like, as we can see, uh, his name here is this, which matches his name here. But that's not all. They have the same social security number. But that's not all. We both see, and it, it got down to the point they were wearing the same shirt in two different photos. <laughs> and he's still like, It's like, this... we get it, it's the same guy! And at the end, he's like, with this information, we can safely assume this is the same individual. <laughs> <laughs> we can safely assume. God. <laughs> that's what this reminds me of. The man moved to a city called Pickering, a small city east of Toronto. I will discuss this with my dad's friend, the ex-cop, and see if this matches anything the police knew about the man. I also want to see if he has any other knowledge of what was aired on Caledon Local 21. Surely we have to assume that the, uh, the broadcasts are going to start coming back somehow, is what I'm going to assume. I don't know. But we'll see. We shall see. I the, see. The next update. February 10th, 2010. Good news, guys. I talked to my dad's friend, and he disclosed a lot of information for me. First, I asked if the police had any information on the man who ran Caledon Local 21. He replied that they have only had the same leads for years, never found a suspect. However, the Peel Regional Police do have some of the tapes found in the house Caledon Local 21 was, was broadcasted from. He took me over so I could watch a few. I guess I haven't said anything, I haven't said much about him yet. My dad's friend's name is Mitchell Wilson. A pretty nice guy. 
He seems to understand my thirst for knowledge on what happened during the late 90s in that house. He feels it was wrong that my dad went so long without telling me much. He took me to the Davis Road Police Station. If you don't know, it's the largest station in Caledon, and one of the largest within the Peel region itself. One of the main stations around Peel have some of the tapes. I was able to watch all of the footage that the Davis Road Station has. Unfortunately, I wasn't allowed to take any tapes home for obvious reasons. I just want to say one thing I really like with a lot of these stories and that this is setting up really well too is I like the amount of the amount of times that like adults like withhold things from their children yeah or what like almost like no kid could ever handle hearing these things or being left in the dark and it always proves to be the wrong thing instead of just being completely transparent and having it be like an open discussion in due time like I don't think you have to traumatize somebody yeah, but I do yeah. think like I think that like this deception that it starts off with is like also what like lends so many people to be digging so much more. And now yeah, yeah. my gut reaction too is that Elliot is going to dig too far and something like I, I don't know. Like I, I I would hate for him to be like, man, no one is giving me answers. I need to keep digging. Yeah. And then it ends up like really backfiring on him. It, it you know ends what I mean? Up Versus to, like, like finding Mr. Bear on his own or something like that. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I think. Uh... I think it's a good trickle of information, whereas, like, you're not going to tell a six-year-old what happened, but you tell a 16-year-old yeah. what happened, right? I um, think you could. I think that even, like, a 13-year-old or something where it's, like, you, you're you obviously not mature yet, but I think that you have enough cognitive functioning to where you could be like, hey, this is what happened, and it's, like, a really pretty horrifying thing. I think that as you're growing, you need to know, like, the dangers of what's going on. Yeah. Especially, I would feel so guilty if I took someone there and it ended up being something horrible, right? Yeah. Where you'd almost want to be like, let's not have that happen again, etc. Yeah, yeah. No, I agree. I think uh, it's also a good trickle because, like, now Mitchell's like, you you can see the tapes. You know, I, I understand. I'll let you see them. And it also is good for the reader because we have a good balance between hearing new tapes and then talking about what they might mean stuff like that um yeah i think it's i mean a good as a, as as with a lot of these stories the deception with the parents is always weird i'm like still kind of skeptical with the dad because i do like the line where he says mitchell says he feels it was wrong or this is in reference to elliot saying what mitchell said he feels it was wrong that my dad went so long without telling me much yeah yeah it's just one little line where i'm like mm, i don't know i'm watching that dad i'm watching that dad now <laughs> i don't know so the episodes that he was shown Paint with the Soul, Episode 10. Garbage Thrown Away. Paint with the Soul was one of the shows that I Am Real Life and Siggy92 discussed on Neo Seeker. I told the police about this, and they informed me that 12 episodes of the show were made and broadcasted between December 5th, 1997 and January the 8th, 1998. This also further backs up my theory that this and the Satan show would have come first because he ended early 1998 to do more Mr. Bear stuff. So it seems like Paint with the Soul came first. Exactly as I Am Real Life and Siggy92 described, the episode opened with the cameraman wandering around in a forest. It appeared to be during this evening as it seemed the sun was setting. The cameraman walked along a path until he got to an area where there was a lot of garbage lying in the leaves. The camera looked around at the various wrappers, bottles, bags, and boxes, making sure each item got a few seconds of screen time. The camera then focused on a single area before the man spoke. I recall he spoke in a very timid, quiet voice, and I swear I've heard it somewhere else before. Like, on another Caledon Local 21 show. I could barely hear what he was saying, but he mainly talked about how humans are garbage, or something that had to do with saving ourselves by cleaning up the garbage, or us. It actually sounded really stupid, but still a feeling of dread came over me. I mean, that forest was possibly where those bodies were found, right? Mr. Bear's Cellar, episode 25. When the police administrator brought in this tape, I actually said, Oh, shit. And chuckled a bit out loud. Of course, I got stares from the staff, but Wilson explained to them about my little experience with Mr. Bear and how I still kept the letter he sent me. Like the previous episodes, this one included a guy wearing a bear mascot costume. The episode began with Mr. Bear waddling over to his cellar door with a bottle of orange juice in his paws. On the ground were 16 shot glasses, as well as a small bottle that contained an unknown liquid. Mr. Bear poured an equal amount of orange juice into each glass before opening the smaller bottle and depositing one drop into the glasses. Mr. Bear then went off camera. There was a minor sound such as shuffling and 
Then Mr. Berry emerged from behind the camera's location. Following him were 16 children. Some looked as young as four, while others looked like they were practically teenagers. As the children entered, the administrator commented that this is the only episode that showed all 16 victims. The kids all looked rather content, except for this one who had visible bruises on his face. And unlike the other kids, he had a more fearful expression. He also looked about 11 or 12, which caused me to recognize him. He was the kid who asked about his sister and subsequently met an unknown fate at the end of episode 23, that one episode I watched during July of 99. When I told the administrator this, he confirmed it was the same kid. He was also featured in 24, an episode that only aired once at 3 p.m. in July of 99. The police have still not found the tape. Mr. Baird then broke into song, singing about citrus fruits and how good vitamin C was for you. I could barely hear the lyrics as they were muffled by the bear mask. The kids all drink their juice, the one from episode 23 doing it rather reluctantly, and the episode ended. After viewing the tapes in possession of the David Road Police Station, I'm satisfied, but only temporarily. I still want to know the full story. The police just keep giving me the same crap about the creator of Caledon Local 21 being a fetishist pedophile as well as an apparent cultist. I'll sign off for now, get into university first, and get information later. Hopefully, I'll get back to this blog as soon as possible. I mean, we're getting to a spot here where I, I the, the the thing about him, I don't know how you read this, but when he put the drop of stuff in the orange juice, it yeah. almost makes you think it's like a sedative or something that Yeah. Yeah. In a way, it makes me think um maybe would help them not feel pain whatever. Like does is is the guy is Mr. Bear is he feeling sympathetic towards these kids he's obviously some kind of mentally unwell man but is he is it going to be one of those things where it's like the voices are telling me to do this but i don't want to or something you know like the the information we're being given i'm, I'm wondering uh what kind of drug he's given them it seems like sedating them somehow but i'm not i'm not entirely I, I think sure. it'd be a kind of drug that just kind of made the kids more passive you know they'll go along with whatever he says um kind of dull their senses so to speak uh, we can also see that after that kid tried to get away, he was physically beat, and now he's drinking it because he's in fear of that happening again. Well, yeah, he doesn't want to have that happen to him again. I'm wondering when, if Elliot is going to try to reach out and meet up with I Am Real Life and Siggy92. No. I wonder if I wonder if they're going to have any kind of like meet up to be able to meet them in person or something. I, I I'm curious. I, I'd like to, I'd like to see if he meets them in person and to see like what kind of conversation that would be. Yeah. Okay, continuing on. Next update, May 8th, 2010. Last month, I finally got my G2 license. In Ontario, Canada, this allows you to drive in a car by yourself as well as with some passengers after six months. I, of course, took advantage of this and drove into Caledon for a little Sunday drive. Since I haven't updated this blog in a while, I figured I might as well visit the house where the infamous channel of my childhood was located. The house looked different than when I saw it last in October. The place was no longer used as a daycare and just sat there abandoned. However, it did have a for sale sign showing that someone still owned it, wanting to get rid of it though. So I want to ask you, what do you think of going back? You know there, you know he's not there logically, right? Mm. But what do you think about driving to the house? I think if you're in search of, I think if you're in search of answers, I think that you would, you'd want to think that, or I, th I believe the desperation of your mind would think that there is something there that someone has not picked up on, yeah. right? I think that also being in this thing and feeling this connection to something that's like mentally overtakes you, seeing it, feeling it in person is probably so much different. But I would say that it's you being like, th them being obsessed on the aspect of like him being a, a like a pedophile yeah. and stuff. I think that even Elliot's just like, I think that there's something more at play here mm -hmm. than that. And I think that he is wanting that kind of closure, especially because you, I mean, in a, in a sense, he came so close to death himself. Yeah. So it's like, yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, if, if it was me in the situation, I would be reading it. Like there is something that someone has not uncovered yet. Mm -hmm. And a fascination too. I mean, in a way it's like, it's almost like an obelisk or an old temple to this like guy. You know what I mean? It's still standing. It's there. It represents all of these evils in a way. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, I, I think I would want to go too. Um, I don't know if it'd be a good idea, but I'd probably want to at least. Yeah, I mean, at this point too, from what we've read, there's nothing to say that it's still harmful now. So I think that like I don't think that, I don't think it's like a negative to go back. I think it's just a matter of I'm wondering if his intentions are to just find something that has not been uncovered. Yeah, it might be. There might be something there. Uh, the abandoned house drew fuzzy memories from my mind, mainly of that day my dad took me to visit Mr. Bear. A feeling of dread came upon me. What happened to the children while they were living in that house? I walked up the steps to the front door and peered through the window. Inside, I could see a nearly empty hallway with a few boxes at the end. At the end of the hallway, to the right, was an open doorway, presumably leading to the kitchen. To the left were two doors, both apparently leading to the rooms visible through the windows outside. I wondered where the cellar entrance was located and whether it had been sealed up. I walked around to the back of the house and found my answer. Two wooden doors lined at an almost flat angle were padlocked shut. This had to lead to the cellar. Not wanting to hang around, you cannot imagine what was going through my mind at that time, I departed. Behind the house, the empty field continued on until it reached a dense forest that lined the horizon. I wondered if that was the forest where the bodies of the children were found. I thought to myself, screw it, and... <laughs> oh, sorry, go ahead. I was just say fuck it, but yeah, screw it, it's fine. <laughs> and proceeded to walk across the field behind the house into the forest. The forest was oddly quiet, save for the few periodic sounds of a woodpecker drilling into a distant tree. I cautiously made my way deeper into the woods, not really caring about the fact that I had no idea where I was going. I don't know how to explain it, but it felt like there was something I had to find. I came to a thinner part of the woods and a few small houses in the distance. Polo's house crossed my mind, and I wondered if one of those homes had belonged to him. I neared a small clearing in which I could see three adequately sized logs gathered around a black, charred area, showing a small fire had been lit there recently. Hey! Get the fuck out of our fort! <laughs> those words nearly gave me a heart attack. I turned to my left and saw two dark-clothed people running towards me. My initial thought was to run. However, as they came closer... I saw that they were just kids in their early teens, possibly 13 or 14, maybe even 12. As they approached me, they realized my size as well. I'm 6'1", while they could be no bigger than 5'8". One might have been 5'7". Damn. <laughs> big fucking 16-year-old. God damn, dude. Good <laughs> he lord. He's tall. He's a big boy. Old he, boy's eating his green beans he, and he, stuff. My word. He's going pro immediately. <laughs> yeah. We said... Get the fuck out. The larger one, who was wearing a Slipknot shirt. Hey, there's your reference. You said hey. you wanted, it's not Limp Biscuit, but it's a reference to something. There it is. I like that. <laughs> the larger one who was wearing a Slipknot shirt said half-heartedly. I stood my ground and shrugged. The shorter one was wearing a Metallica shirt. There you go, another one. I like that. S swung out a butterfly knife and held it in my direction. This is literally Beavis and Butthead. Yes, you, you know what it is? You know what it is? Uh, the hmm. one reference we forgot to make earlier, the t the boys from Jeff the Killer, <laughs> the two boys. Oh shit! <laughs> That's exactly right. That's them. Yeah. Looks like we've got some fresh meat. That's it. Looks like we've looks like we've got some fresh meat. <laughs> oh, I like this. I like this kind of. No, you wouldn't want to. <laughs> I said in a deep, serious tone, <laughs> trying to sound as badass as possible. <laughs> I, pull <laughs> I pulled out my cell phone. Two kids withdrew, uh, the one in the Metallica shirt putting away the knife. Look, dude, we don't like people in our fort, so can you just go? The one in the Slipknot shirt said, obviously intimidated. I had no business in the forest anyway, so I uttered out a simple... Fun. ...and turned before I realized I had a great opportunity. Did either of you hear a guy who murdered a bunch of kids in these woods about 13 years ago? I asked the kids. The two looked at each other in confusion or the one wearing the Metallica shirt answered. Yeah. Everyone knows about that guy. He said to me as if I were stupid. The kid in the Slipknot shirt continued. He still lives around here, in the storm drain. My big brother's friend said he saw him in a bear costume once, wandering around the forest at night. Whoa! Okay, that's the Holy most shit. menacing he, part of the entire story. He still lives right here in oh the my. storm drain. Oh. It is crazy. <laughs> it is crazy. 
<laughs> oh, 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 that gave me chills. Uh, huh. Gosh, the idea of being in the woods at night and he's still wandering out there, like, maybe looking for the kids he lost or looking for more, and he lives in a storm drain. Could you imagine uh. just peeking into a storm drain and seeing a bear costume? Huh. Yeah, and you, and, and you know, I mean, I would assume, too, that he's still wearing it as, like, some kind of weird identity kind of thing. Yeah, like, he is Mr. Guy's bear obviously now. mentally unwell yeah. anyways, like, yeah. Oh, man, that's awful. See, what's wild is when I when I heard this story for the first time, stuff like that didn't stick out to me. Because I was like, I think I was 12 when I read this the first time. So to me, I'm just like, oh, that's a that's a creepy monster thing to have, right? It didn't hit as hard as it did just now. Huh, man. Yeah. Well, you know what's kind of interesting about you saying that, too? At 12, these guys are 13, and they're saying it as casually as you probably yeah, read Yeah, yeah. Like, which oh, is, which is pretty sick. Legend. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man. My instincts told me this was probably a lie, and the owner of Caledon Local 21 is probably long gone, only existing as a folklore in this smaller, isolated community. However, as a human, the thought of the mysterious unknown sparked interest within. And where is the storm drain? I asked, just out of curiosity. I don't actually believe the kid's story. The kid in the Metallica shirt stared at me for a few moments, his eyes seemingly full of annoyance, yet curiosity for me. You're not from around here, are you? Why did you even come here? Now, I do admit I was slightly startled by the nature of his question. However, I figured I might as well explain why I was there, just in case people mistook my intentions. I told the two kids about my experience with the man in Caledon Local 21, that I had come to maybe seek out some sort of closure, although even I wasn't exactly sure. The kids seemed familiar with the channel as they smiled and looked at each other when I mentioned it. They also became more understanding and gave me a detailed description on how to get to the storm drain. Shortly after, I decided to just turn around the way I came and head back to the house, leaving the kids at their fort. But, now you're probably wondering why I left out such a detail about the kids- wait, sorry. But now, you're probably wondering why I left out such detail about what the kids told me just now. It is because I'm choosing to conclude what I have gathered now. Here's what the kids told me in detail. The storm drain lies ahead of the kids' fort, same direction I was heading. The drain ends at a small river, where access water is drained out. Near here is a small playground. The kids told me people rarely use it. The man supposedly lives in the large pipe the rainwater drains out of. People have seen him, although always either wearing a bear mask or the mask and a full-body bear costume. Note, I do not believe this is true, and in fact simply a myth made by the residents of Caledon. The story does not seem plausible in any way. Why did no one call the police? Didn't this guy look suspicious? And other questions like this leave the story invalid. I may visit the storm train. Not because I believe the story, but because I want an excuse to visit Caledon again. So this blog doesn't die. With no more tapes to watch, I don't know what to talk about anymore. Thanks for continuing to support me in my blog. I know many are looking forward to more information about what happened in Caledon during the year 1999. And I'll do my best to continue my research into the topic. Elliot out. Okay, and that was in May of two, 2010. Well, let me ask you, what do you think? Do you like just I, out of your I, gut I, reaction? I do, right, say, you think I do want to say immediately, if we remove the polo part, because I feel like that kind of killed the pacing a bit. I feel like it was too much revealed at once, right? Like, yeah. Oh, they're fine. There's a fire. If we remove that part, this entire thing is so expertly dripped to the reader like from from like oh there's this creepy guy back in 99 uh and then a bunch of kids died so that's why the police are interested and then we hear more tapes we start to put together psychology we start to put together purposes and now we get the detail that he's living in a storm drain nearby although in the real world i would say this is definitely an urban legend right because how does a guy live in the woods for 10 years right no one called the police no one spots sure. him stuff like that yeah yeah, yeah. But the story has given us just enough room for error with the supernatural that it could be possible. Maybe he's some spirit. Maybe he's some ghost, something like that, right? Uh, and it, it puts you in this perfect gray area where you don't know what to believe. And it, it creates dread. It creates tension. It's so well done so far. I really, this, this is a lot better than I thought it would be looking back on it now. And it, it, it's cool for that. I'm, I'm happy to see that. The thing that is piquing my curiosity at the moment is that 
the last it ended with even Elliot, our narrator, our protagonist, even questioning the validity of like this is probably fake. I mean, this doesn't make sense. To where the author knows that these questions are arising, and I and I'm wondering, even though that this was like kind of continued on, if the charred bodies is breadcrumbs that is trying to. It's setting up some kind of subversion of expectation. I'm, I'm, I'm very curious to see. I, I don't think that we've fully gotten a whole grasp of what's going on, and I don't think it's as simple as the guy being in a pipe. Like I think that I'm, I'm curious. I feel like we're we're heading down a very interesting road Even right now. if nothing more comes out of the guy in the pipe thing, I think it does serve to like the impact this event has had on the local community, right? Oh sure. Like the legend yeah, is, he's no, still out there. He's still in the woods. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it works. Yeah. He himself has become an urban legend. Yeah. I mean, like, that's... Yeah, yeah that Absolutely. makes sense, totally. I'm loving this story so far. I'm, I'm thrilled with... Yeah, I'm, I, I'm, I'm locked yeah. in right now. All right, next update. October 7th, 2010. Wow, nearly five months since I last updated. I'm guessing everyone pretty much thinks I was dead, right? Thankfully, I'm not. But in all my seriousness, I really have been busy these past few months. And a blog about something that could have killed me as a kid is a little low on my current priorities list. As of now, I'm living in Waterloo, Ontario, attending the University of Waterloo for computer engineering. Yeah, I'm a keener. As you can imagine, engineering is no walk in the park. So obviously, I nearly forgot about this vlog. But as you can see now, I'm back. I remembered to visit the storm drain the kids from the Caledon Forest told me about. I was out in a clearing between the wooded areas, nearby a marsh. Unfortunately, I found absolutely nothing, save for a turtle that retreated into its built-in home when it saw me. I snapped some pics of the pipe, which I have posted as well. Also, let me tell you it was not a storm drain like they said it was. What I saw was a simple pipe, possibly to channel the access water from the marsh. When I returned from Caledon, however, I simply kept putting off uploading everything until I forgot all about my blog. It just didn't seem important anymore. Please forgive me. It wasn't until only recently that I am now interested in my case again. On September 10th, I received an email from this email address. Return the bee at hotmail.com. Funny, am I right? Well, it gets better. I'm going to copy and paste the exact email this guy sent me. Dear Elliot, my dear, dear boy. You see, this story may or may not be true but it could happen. There are many slots for airtime. If you have... If you have money, you can have a public access TV channel. Some public access channels share airtime, like EWTN, which is a religious channel based out of Michigan, that shows Catholic-based programming, but during off-air hours, have independent shows or just blue screen. Cable networks have empty channels available for rent space. So the scenario of a pedo renting a channel on basic TV is not far-fetched at all. However, public access TV is widely reviewed and can be terminated at any time. These are the rules of the United States, not for Canada, where this story took place. So if this happened in the U.S., the pedo would be tracked and arrested immediately. Yes, this story could happen, but it is unlikely. 100 fuzzy hugs, Mr. Bear. Now obviously this letter is fake and sounds almost corrupted. But still, I would like to thank whoever sent it, though they could use some English lessons. Just reading the, le the letter creeped me out, but because of it, I am now full of this new interest to continue my blog. I guess it's just funny trying to pursue the mysteries I've always questioned. Now my roommate knows about all this. He thought the letter was real and actually seemed more scared than I was for a second. But then I shrugged it off. So he did too. I mean, what are the chances of this being real? How could Mr. Bear know all this about public access TV, and about when I went to Caledon on those occasions? More or less, know my email or me still be interested in this in his cellar. Ha. I'm going to send a reply to return the bee. Wow, just looking at that email address, you can tell someone wanted to freak me out. It didn't really work, though. Oh, yeah, we can definitely tell. That's why you're still yeah. talking about it. Although, to whomever you are, thank you for sparking my interest back into the full matter. Maybe I can find out more about what happened to Mr. Bear. Hopefully, because although I don't buy that email, a part of me still feels anxious. 
Thank you to all those who are still following me and become avid fans. You are also why I'm choosing to continue with this. Thanks, guys. <laughs> he sounds freaked out. <laughs> he def he's definitely freaked out. The thing, too, well, I guess just uh, out of curiosity, do you think that that email is real, or do you think it's like somebody who was following the story and then they are trying uh, to prank him? I, I don't know. I kind of feel the same way I do about the storm drain thing. You know, it could just be set dressing to show how this has affected it, but it could also yeah. potentially be real. Um, cause we don't know if, if Mr. Bear is just a normal person, I don't think it's real, but if there's some supernatural element, then I think it definitely could be. Hmm. Okay. I, I can tell he's getting freaked out by it though. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, even the way he talked about the kids and stuff too, and how much he reiterated that he didn't believe what they were saying. I think that you could tell that. I think that he was trying to almost willfully think that he's like trying to convince himself it wasn't real. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah, I think so. Also, I will add, originally, to my understanding, before this was all posted to creepypasta.com, it was on uh, Camden's actual blog he had, like his personal blog. Um, okay. So I think those original pictures of what the storm drain looked like are now lost. Because um, I haven't seen them, and I don't think I've seen anyone reshare them. But if anyone knows if those pictures can't be found, that would be cool just for set dressing yeah. for the video. But yeah, I, th mm -hmm. I think those pictures are lost because the original blog's no longer up. It's just gone. Yeah, I think so at least. Okay. All right. Now, well, it's not like super indicative to the story. It was pictures of a storm. Drain, no, right? it's it'd, it'd be it'd be nice. To it'd be have, nice. Though, it's nice to, to have. Yeah, just to see where yeah. he might be. Next update: November seventh, twenty ten. Wow, I can't believe this blog hasn't been deleted yet. I haven't checked it for so long. I have my reasons, and I'd rather not discuss them just yet. It has been a rather traumatic month for me. Some of you were right. I shouldn't have gone back trying to relive the mysteries of my childhood, but I couldn't resist. It's been a month since my last post, and a lot has happened. Let's recap where I'm at right now with regards to the whole Mr. Bear incident. Return to be at Hotmail.com is no longer in use. I tried replying to the email, but I got no reply. I tried again a while back. Still no response. I've actually moved up to Ottawa, capital of Canada, for those who don't know, for university, so I haven't been back to Caledon or back home in the Peel region for a while. I had my reasons for leaving, as you could guess why. I've had to make a new email account because people keep pranking mailing me, pretending to be Mr. Bear. Thanks a lot, guys. Not. <laughs> <laughs> That's the most 2009. Yeah, <laughs> like, not. Late epic. <laughs> Troll face. Yeah, I just did that. <laughs> why Why have I ventured back to this blog? Mitchell Wilson, remember my dad's ex-cop friend, gave me a phone call on October 23rd about a tape that was found in a branch of the Brampton Public Library. Brampton is my hometown, in case you haven't picked up on that. He claims he isn't allowed to discuss the contents of the tape with me, as it's still in evidence, but he asked me to come check it out when I return home. That tape got the gears grinding again because we all know what was on the last tapes I saw. I can only imagine what can be on it. I'm guessing it must have something to do with Caledon Local 21. I guess I just wanted to say I am continuing this blog and thank you for everyone who still follows it. I don't know when my next entry will be, but when I see that tape, I'll write what I find. I don't know what to expect, but the idea of seeing another tape has got to be interested in this whole mystery all over again. Elliot. So we now move on to the last tape. I will mention uh, something that was really good that I didn't call out when it happened is that part where he's at the Mr. Bear house and the seller's right there and he feels like really weird all of a sudden and walks away from it. Mm. Like, l the logical part of his brain knows that Mr. Bear's not there anymore, right? That it's, yeah. it's not going to hurt him. But it makes so much sense to get out of there immediately, right? Like, there's the cellar door. You know horrible things happen there. And you saw what was on the other side of that door from that camera. And it's haunted you all these years. And the padlock's the only thing between you and it. The, the human inclination would be to run, right? To get out of there. Like I said, it's not logical, but it makes sense that he would leave rather than investigating. I really like that detail. I mean, you're right. You're definitely right. You know, you know what's crazy is that whenever I read that, I thought that he left because the inclination was he was like, I want to break in. I don't know uh, why I thought that until now. But I think that I think that hearing you say that, I think you might be. 
I think that that makes way more sense of just that that dreadful little feeling, like almost like that pit in your gut. Yeah, like it, like his body's just like get out, get out, get out. You know, like definitely. Yeah, yeah. I th I I think a lot of the terror works well, and I feel like Elliot is being realistically portrayed as someone who had that kind of trauma, and he's now trying to process it, and now he's like having to interact with it, and like the way that he interacts with it. I think it makes a lot of sense as a character. Yeah. I agree. So, big update here. Update January 21st, 2011. So, two months after the last one. The end of 2010 into the new year was dreadfully long for me. University has been giving me the usual sleepless nights, especially since I transferred to Ottawa, which is the place to party. Sarcasm. But now I am back home with my dad in Brampton, the town I grew up in. I got home on the 18th of December and have been visiting with friends and family. Or at least that's what I would rather have done. Now the festive holiday cheer that I usually have at this time of the month is absent. And I just want to say too, really quick, one thing that I liked from that last post, sorry about the late thought here, but no, no, you're good. one thing I liked about it was he's like, oh, people keep making these emails and trying to scare me. Ha ha. I really like, I like that because to me, like looking back at it, I'm like, mm, what if it's just the guy making different emails yeah, and messaging yeah. you? So, yeah. so creepy. See, it, see it fits because it's realistic that people would be making other emails and messaging him after he sure. gave the idea. But it's also, like you said, a chance that it's him just making burner emails. So, yeah, again, it, it works fits on both that levels. great area of like, is this just like people's response to it? Or is this another Mr. Bear thing? Is there really a difference if it leads to the same dread in people who live with it? Like the thing in the storm drain. Does it make a difference if kids won't go play on the playground either way? You know? And also the idea, too, that the story has picked up by this time. I'm assuming that the story online is doing very well and it's probably well known within the circles of the horror stories. Right. But it could be the idea, too, that like it's gotten enough traction to where it's left. It's like made its way back to the guy and he's able to like know that the guy's talking, knowing that this kid is talking about this again. Yeah. And wants to oh, contact ooh, him. Ooh, yeah. Just like that idea is just kind of creepy and fun. Yeah. Yeah. This is, again, very well done. Uh, to answer the hundreds of emails and comments I got, yes, I did see the tapes that my dad's friend, Mitchell Wilson, promised to show me. These tapes, however, act as a curse. I want to know more, yet I want to forget everything. I couldn't help it. I needed to see those tapes. Not only for myself, but for all of you guys who are just as intrigued as I am by that ominous man in a bear suit from my past. However, after viewing those tapes... I feel that pit of dread deep inside me once again. That feeling where I know that all those kids in those videos are dead. That I could have been one of those kids. And that humanity is a dark, dark place. If you haven't skipped this paragraph or the juicier details below, thank you for listening to my ramblings. On January the 1st, I called Mitchell Wilson and asked if there was a time where I could come by and view the tapes. Things were pretty slow at the station because of a snowstorm, so he said I could come down any time that day. The tapes were located at a branch not too far from me, so I braved the slushy roads and terrible Brampton drivers and made my way to the Peel Regional Police Station located at the Bramlier City Center. I met Wilson at the front desk, where he then led me up to the second floor into a small office. He instructed me to have a seat and wait while he went and got the tapes. Before leaving the office, he turned to me and said, I know you're curious, but are you sure you want to do this? Of course I did. Or at least thought so. Besides, Wilson's friend had pulled a lot of strings to get me in there, and I didn't want to waste the opportunity. This particular station had two tapes on hand. I was only able to watch a few minutes of footage, however, because the second tape was apparently too damaged to be played on a VCR. Mr. Bear's Cellar, Episode 30. Mr. Bear never ceases to disturb me, especially after what almost happened when I was younger. This episode took place outside in a forest at dusk, making it slightly hard to see, especially considering the quality of the film, trademark of anything from Khaled and Local 21. The episode started with the camera being held in the paws of Mr. Bear, aiming it at himself. That bear mask. It looked more sinister in the shadows of the trees unmistakable muffled voice spoke up hello children today i will be doing a wonderful thing for my friends i will be delivering them to a faraway land 
Well, they will surely be happy. Mr. Bear returned the camera around to show an ATV with an attached trailer. But what stood out the most was that the trailer contained seven motionless children lying side by side. This here is the first load, but more will be there on their way soon. Mr. Bear turned around and pointed the camera at a large burlap tarp spread on the ground. He picked the tarp up, revealing a large hole that must have been at least 12 feet deep and maybe about 15 feet wide. The rest of the episode consisted of Mr. Bear taking each kid and dropping them into the hole. I asked Wilson if they were dead, to which he shook his head and replied, Not yet. Soon all the kids were in the pit. Some were in awkward positions due to being tossed in, but they remained unconscious. The vitamin C will surely help these children on the great journey that awaits them. Mr. Bear mentioned as he panned the camera towards multiple bottles of gasoline beside a bush. The camera zoomed into the bottles as Mr. Bear hummed before the episode ended. Wilson revealed to me that these were seven of the 16 victims found burnt to a crisp. Gasoline is what the man playing Mr. Bear used to light them on fire. A pit full of burning children. Who the hell would do that? The feeling of dread found me once again when I realized that I could have been one of those kids. Wilson then explained to me that he had previously lied. The other tape, confiscating by the Bramlea Police Branch, did indeed work and contained the filming of the actual burning. However, he felt that I wouldn't be able to handle the disturbing and graphic nature of the episode. And you know what? Maybe I can't. I don't even want to see it. I'm satisfied for now. But I just need some time to get myself together. The thing is, the man who ran Caledon Local 21 is still out there. More to come soon. Elliot. So how, how are you feeling right now? Very, um... <laughs> Very disturbing. You know what my mind immediately went to, which is interesting. This concluded in 2011. It started in 2009 with some of the footage and stuff. The last part there feels so eerily similar to the movie Sinister, mm, and how all yeah, of those, yeah. and how of all those little recorded vignettes, it almost feels like a little too similar for them not to have been inspired by this in a way, right? When did uh, Sinister come out? Sinister came out in 2012, dude. Okay, so... Oh, are you saying Sinister took from this story? I'm not saying they stole anything. I'm just saying, like, it feels so maybe. odd that if this thing was... Exactly. Inspired in that way. But even just, like, the way of, like, the shitty camera, the people lined up. I mean, like, that movie is very infamous for those scenes. And this is, like, if at the time... Even now, it's disturbing and stuff. Granted, it's not as graphic as, like, probably a lot of the stories would be nowadays, but still. I mean, it just it feels like I'm like... That's what my mind went to immediately was that movie and those little vignettes. Maybe. There could have there could, there could been some inspiration taken. Like I said, the story wasn't super popular till like, 2014. Once, like, it started making oh, okay. rounds on YouTube. I mean, there it still had a community, but it wasn't, like, you know, as big sure. as it became. Sure, you know... Till later. Also, the, the 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 aspect too of like the Poughkeepsie tapes also being something of an inspiration to this as well is like finding tape tapes of a serial killer and like it's just the raw footage from a serial killer's catalog of stuff. Yeah. It's just the way that the stuff is presented, even like the monster himself, the bear kind of thing, and wearing this mask. And it, it, my mind is just heading towards a sinister place, but it's a uh, it's very revealing. It's yeah. very it's very revealing. I like that we're getting more dialogue from Mr. Bear as well. Definitely still in a manic kind of episode and stuff. Mm -hmm. Still wondering what the vitamin C um wondering what what like the importance of vitamin C if it's just him being fucking insane or if there's some kind of going to be some I, kind I of think, reveal I there. Th I that? think he's talking about just like oh the vitamin C will help them. It's cuz he knocked them out with it. I think that's what he means by that. Um cuz all the kids are all the kids were unconscious on the trailer, right? Right. Did you do you think the tone in which I was reading it, or do you think that like the way that he was saying like the quotes of Mister Bear? Do you think he was cheerful, or do you think because even him saying like 
the vitamin C will help them. Is he like slightly disturbed by what he's doing? Like, what do you think? Because he's kind of catching himself on some <sighs> of his words too. I don't know. I think maybe he's just so far gone. I don't even know if he could be disturbed at this point with what he's doing. I think it's more so just he's. It's like he's describing it to kids. He's trying to keep it whimsical, right? That's where I sure. Think yeah. He's no. At. He, yeah, I mean, it's definitely a deranged man, and I imagine that he's still keeping this kind of childish, like, po like positive voice yeah, yeah. kind of thing. You know what I mean? Like, just totally delusional. Yeah, I think so. I don't know. I don't, I don't know if he is disturbed by what he's doing. Um, the I thing here that's next that says Enri, what does that mean? Um, I-N-R-I. Well, the update doesn't have a date. I don't think... So INRI was is what was uh, written on uh, Jesus's cross when he was crucified. So maybe that's mm. what it. <laughs> maybe that's what's referencing. I don't know. Is, is there another name for it that means like no date given? Like you know, kind of like saying NA. Yeah, I mean maybe. I mean, for, uh, just googling it, it just says uh, translates to Jesus Na uh, Nazarene, King of the Jews. Yeah, it's just what I see. Um, yeah, that's what was put on Christ's cross. Which also, if he's, Christ, yeah. yeah, which is um, if this is just giving more validity to Mister, like this quote here, which it just says I N R I. There's no date or time on this, by the way, guys. We're just this is the, this is what the entry says. Once upon a time, there lived a boy named Elliot. Elliot was a clever boy who loved playing with his friends. One day, he watched a lovely television show about a bear and his children friends. The children loved helping each other as good children should, but they also loved the bear. The bear loved the children since the children were so good at helping him and the fallen angel. The children and the bear wanted to play together forever with the help of their angel friend. But the fallen angel needed even more help, so the children had to give up the ultimate sacrifice. Because that's what friends do, Elliot. They help each other. Help us, Elliot. Burn with us, Elliot. I want you, Elliot. He wants you, Elliot. Come back to my cellar. Pretty pleased with sugar and icing on top. Mr. B. And it ends with I-N-R-I -I again. Which I'm guessing, I'm wondering if the religious undertone there, since he's a Satanist and the fallen angels, obviously Lucifer and stuff like that, but I'm wondering if INRI is just uh, kind of a representation of the crucifixion or like the sacrifice. That if, actually, if that, if, that, now that you just said that, that's probably what it is because Christ's death on the cross is like the ultimate sacrifice for people. So maybe the Satanist using it here is implying that the death of the children is the ultimate sacrifice for Satan, for the fallen angel. That probably God, dude, something is just what dropped it in my in. room. Holy shit! What'd you say? Oh, God, did you say something dropped in the room? Dude, a box dropped off my shelf randomly <laughs> in my room. Are you <laughs> fucking kidding me? Yes, finally. A fucking Elgato, a fucking Elgato stream box box dropped from the sec. I don't know how. I this is honestly. That's fucking me up. I, I, I don't know how it I fell off. I that will say, scared the fuck out of me. I oh will God. say, you saying INRI is the one explicitly like religious symbol that we've mentioned so far. And when we mention it, the box falls off your shelf. So I want you to keep that in mind, Hunter. That actually, that actually, I'm not even joking. I'm like, that actually fucking, that scared the shit out of me. Okay. <laughs> Holy shit. Good. <laughs> I'm glad. And my door happened. is closed. Mike, my, my door is closed. There's no way. Make fun of my wife. <laughs> make fun of my wife opening Yeah, the but door. at least she, she's your wife, dude. I, do I have a goddamn demon in my room right now? I'm, I'm freaking out. <laughs> well, I know, I know. I got, I got this. And I got, uh, and I got this. So I'm gonna be all right, regardless of. Dude, what you the saying this is. and you this, and I have no idea what you're referring to, is making it even worse, dude. Because you're not, <laughs> you're not sharing what I could be using to, to help myself. I got this, dude. Now I, I'm <laughs> no, at that, okay. I'm at that feeling where it's like I'm really creeped out. And I'm like hearing like little things. I don't like this. I wonder, dude. I wonder if you could. He that was a pretty loud drop. I'm wondering in my recording if you could hear that. That was fucked up. Shut up, man. Shut up, man. That's my nightmare sound. Alright, it goes into the next it goes into the next entry here, which is actually kind of crazy because the last entry that actually had a date 
was January of 2011, and now it says update April 5th, 2011. Hmm. So it's been some time. A few months, yeah. I will say, I, I will say, if that is what the INRI means, that's pretty, it's pretty sick that Mr. Bear's like fully committed to the, the symbols. Of their religiousness because even even if the story's not supernatural which i don't think it is at this point even if it's not supernatural it's this guy whatever monster mr bear is so convinced that it's real that he's willing to kill over it that's terrifying i just hate that i said inri and the thing had to drop right when yeah, i said that. it's funny that you keep saying it too you keep provoking it <laughs> because i don't it's i'm pretty sure i think everybody who's working the studio today has left too i am very upset <laughs> I'm very, I'm very upset. I'm not gonna lie. I'm actually very skittish right now. <laughs> I'm very, I'm very fucking skittish, and I don't like that. I'm gonna send you a list of like, uh, th like phrases from the Bible you're definitely not supposed to say. And I'm just gonna have <laughs> dude, don't do mind. that. Yeah. Don't even send that to me. Send me some good things to say. I want some I, good. Uh, I'm, we, I need some good just, omens. We dude. just hear Hunter scream, and like that's the last Creepcast <laughs> episode. Ah! <laughs> Oops. Yeah. <laughs> All right. God. All right. Here we go. Update. April 5th, 2011. I wanted to update more. I truly did. However, certain circumstances had turned me off to the whole Caledon Local 21 thing. I've since then had hundreds of emails about my blog and was even in contact with the magazine about my story. But now is the time to come clean to everyone. Where have I been for an entire year? The story of Pandora's box is true, and I opened it. I opened it, and when I watched the second tape in the possession of the Bramella Police Branch, the other subject I'd like to address is the number... Wait, hold on. I watched it the second I... Hold up. I watched... I opened it when Wait, I what? watched the second tape in the possession of the Bramella Police Branch. So he watched the one of the fire. Is that what he's saying? I, I, I think he has not told us what the subject is. I think he said, w this is the second tape of, there's the first one of them going to the pit, and You're he right. said, I don't yeah. I, I don't need to have the, watch the second one, I'm fine. But I think he ended up watching it anyways. Yeah, I opened it when I watched the second tape. Yeah, okay, I think you're right there. The other subject I'd like to address is the number of jokes slash fake emails I've been getting from people claiming to be Mr. Bear. Let's start with the second tape, as that is what traumatized me into stopping my search temporarily. Also... Uh, I'm doubling down on the critique I had earlier. If you cut out Polo's part, I think the story's perfectly paced because we're coming up on the ending. And now to tell us about that stuff, like what was exactly happening in the woods works better. Whereas Polo yeah. kind of like gave a lackadaisical thing, the kids being out in the woods. I know they were just around a campfire then. It wasn't the kids being burnt, I don't think. But I still yeah, feel but like still a crack yeah. addict looking guy. Yeah, it I just feel, doesn't make like any that, sense. It's but, too many people. But in my brain, I'm taking that out and this... This is excellent, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. After a few weeks of playing silent, I decided to ask Mitchell Wilson if I could view that infamous second tape we had talked about. I don't know why. I just felt that viewing the tape would give me some closure. Wilson was obviously reluctant to show me, but I was persistent. He gave me an offer. If I was still interested, by the time I turned 20, he would show me the tape. Not being able to do much else, I just played the waiting game. By the time my 20th birthday rolled around, I was definitely still interested in viewing the tape. I gave Wilson a call, during which he admitted that he had hoped that I would forget about asking him again. But I was not taking no for an answer. You really don't need to see it. He kept telling me. But I did need to see it. I had to at this point. Sure enough, he invited me to the Bramble of Branch one Monday afternoon. Having watched every Saw film and a video of animal slaughterhouses in my ethics class... I was sure I would be able to handle whatever the tape could throw at me. How naive I was. I will say, like, I know I know that I am one to talk. Like, if I hear there's a graphic video going around online, I want to see it, right? Just that, you know, the, 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 the human part of me, I guess. I don't know. Um, I don't think there's ever a scenario I would want to see videos of children being burned, I would hope. But I do understand that he has a personal connection to this and almost has a survivor's guilt about the people who were killed, right? So I mean, yeah, man. If this is the last known tape of it, it yeah. would it, it would haunt you forever if you didn't know. Yeah, yeah. Like, honestly, it would. I think so. So it, I, it makes sense, I guess, you know. Mr. Bear Seller, episode 31. 
When Wilson went to collect the tape from evidence, the officer in charge at the evidence room shook his head at me, his face saying, What are you doing? Wilson explained that this tape includes the last known episode of Mr. Bear Cellar. I rightfully assumed that I would be seeing the fate of the children and began to feel a sense of dread. The episode opened inside a forest, the usual one from the previous episodes. This fact took me a while to realize because it was night, the trees and leaves just looked like shapes dancing around in the darkness. A faint glow of light was present on the right side of the screen. There wasn't any apparent audio. It appeared to be a windy night, yet the trees weren't making any noise. Slowly, the camera began to pan towards the glow, revealing smoke rising from a hole with the tips of flames peeking over the top. Wilson paused at this point. Are you sure you want to see this? <laughs> Dude, Wilson, stop fucking asking that and just show it already. <laughs> How many times has Wilson said, are you sure you want to see this? He's about you know to I mean? show his friend's son a video of children burning. <laughs> like... Yeah, dude, but it's like the only thing Wilson has literally said in quotations is, are you sure you want to see uh, this? All right, that's fair. That's fair. At least change up the, the speech pattern. Yeah, just change it. I mean, yeah, I know. It's just, com it's just comical. But anyways, I agree. Go ahead. I, agree. I insisted on it, even though a voice in my head was telling me not to. The video continued. The cameraman moved towards the hole, showing a pit of fire. This was the hole that I had seen in the previous episode. Only this time, it was filled with shapes. I could see shapes moving around. Fluttering. Flailing. Some motionless. I knew perfectly well what they were. The camera began to adjust to the light and... Burning flesh. Red, black, a blur of surreal movements and colors. I wish I could forget what I saw, but you can't forget a scene like this. This was not a horror movie. This was reality. Human beings were being killed in a horrifying way. A fate that I could have potentially met. The video suddenly cut to dawn. The camera now positioned farther away from the hole. The fire was out. However, there was still smoke rising up. A figure was up ahead. I recognized it right away. The Mr. Bear suit was laid out on the ground. Empty. It looked just as unnerving. The suit was laid out in the shape of a cross. The cameraman did a lap around the suit, treating it like a treasured artifact. Placed at the head of the suit was a sign in bold letters. Oh, oh, I-N-R-I was printed. Uh, <laughs> the cameraman moved back to the end of the suit, zooming into the bear's face. The episode finally ended. Oh, man. Huh. Huh, that, Creepy, gives man. that gives me the chills. Not only yeah, killing the kids, I, I feel like I, but it, then it's, making... It's that, it's that feeling... <sighs> Go ahead, go ahead, sorry. That it's, it's that feeling where it feels like there's, like, spiders crawling on you or something. You yeah. know what I mean? That's what I feel like. I'm like, I feel like... Ugh. After killing those kids, he lays out the suit in a crucifix. As if also, as, it kind of feels like the death of that character. Yeah, yeah. It's almost like with what he's done, he has now crossed over. Right? He has done. He's fulfilled his purpose. He's now the the savior of his story. Yeah, huh. that's what it feels like. It feels like this idea, like this this kind of um, deity that he has is officially completed a, a sac like the sacrifice yeah. you know man huh i was speechless it was like a dream you can you can find a lot of terrible things on the internet but i had never seen anything like this wilson asked if i was okay and i replied with a shaky yes i assured him as we left that i was fine and that the video gave me some closure over the whole incident he didn't seem too confident in me but he left it at that he was right though I had nightmares for weeks. I gave up. I didn't care about the whole thing anymore. A sick man burned a bunch of kids alive, attracting them with a fake kids TV channel. I could have been one of his victims, yet I'm still here. I suppose I should be grateful, but I feel guilty. Am I still here only by pure luck? Ten months later I'm back, but now I need to address something else. My email has been flooded with messages. Some people ask for more details. 
Some ask if I can upload the tapes, and some people email me claiming to be Mr. Bear. First, I cannot get the tapes uploaded as they're A, in police possession as evidence, and B, I have no idea how to transfer VHS onto a computer. As for people pretending to be Mr. Bear, you're not fooling me. If you have dozens of people pretending to be the same person, it doesn't work. I haven't seen a fake Caledon Local 21 YouTube channel, which is cute, but still not real. Even more annoying is the fact that someone hacked my account just to put up some demented poem about me on this blog. I'll leave it in the entry above this one, just to show you guys. I have contacted my webmaster about the entry and was told that it was posted on Halloween. Oh, spooky. Attached to the email, paintwithb at aol.com, which I assume is another joke email. I'm over episode 31 now. The images of what I saw will stick with me for a while, but I want to do one last hurrah. I will get into contact with Mitchell Wilson again and hopefully get set up with the tapes in the possession of the other Peel Police branches. Try to update you guys as soon as I can. I'm sure this won't take so long again. Thank you to everyone who still reads this. Elliot. Wow. I mean, you know, it's interesting because... Um, you can see so many influences and in what other people have done here, especially even like my mind kind of goes like pen pal in a way of an obsessive person. Um, you know, even like with the end of pen pal where it's the guy who was obsessed with this person so much that he dressed his friend up, you know, mm -hmm. and ha I mean, like it, it's like this, this cult of, of obsession thing. The idea too, of, um, sacrificing and that kind of thing. I mean, reading this back in the day must have been extremely graphic. I mean, it was disturbing now, but I feel like now people have to push the stakes because of stories like this, yeah, you know, yeah. like this. I wonder how crazy this must have felt reading it back in 2011. The description of the, the bodies burning so intense, some still, some moving, some slowly, you know, like, mm -hmm. ah, man harrowing stuff and then yeah. the following of the mr bear costume in the shape of a crucifix and then he's just supposedly maybe he's out there maybe not maybe it is people hacking his email maybe it is just legends of the thing that lives in the storm drain maybe it's still him maybe it's the ghost of him maybe it's ah man it's it's such a perfect place of like legends you heard as a kid and you don't know if it's real or not it's such a perfect adaptation of you still in the course of the story don't know what's real or not you don't know what to believe. yeah there's no finality to anything which yeah makes it yes so much Th creepier. that's it that's the perfect way of phrasing it yeah there's no closure no part of this feels like and yeah. that's done it's just like open doors and none of them shut the, yeah the eerie nature of it being so open to is that I think for me and probably viewers listening is that the idea that any one of those joke emails are definitely probably joke emails, but it's just that it's just it, all it takes is for one to be legitimate yeah. to just completely unravel and make this thing even more fucking crazy, you know, and the idea, too, that like he does know that the, Mr. Bear does know Elliot. I mean, he received that letter. Who knows? I mean, like Mr. Bear, the person who is still not, you know, no one's contacted him or no one knows where he's at or who he is could be obsessed i mean this is an extremely yeah. deranged man you know yeah i i will say i think the the hack quote unquote that happened that uh showed it was the poem about him that mr bear supposedly wrote i do think that's real because of the four letter edition right because it, yeah. contains, it contains how else would they know how else would they know exactly how would they know what was about to show up in the next tape so and i think that's what that letter was doing i think that's what that submission that was real. doing so that would mean that he probably is still out there online yeah or, or even, not yeah. only is he still out there but he knows elliot like he yeah. knows what's going well, on and stuff and he still he misses him he wants him to join him right so maybe an update never happening after that implies that mr bear got him yeah made him join the angel huh you never you never know i mean ending it in this way is frustrating in the sense of like i just want to know closure of some kind even if it's him saying like i'm done with this i'm you know i'm putting this behind me blah 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 but even that even this last episode he's like no i'm gonna go look for more and i'm gonna see what happens but we never get that kind of it's like a you know in a way um 
Ted the Caver kind of ends in a similar way. Except Ted the Caver gives you that ultimatum of like, you know, I'll update you when I'm back. Yeah. But he never comes back. You know what I mean? It's that yeah. beautiful yeah. ending. This one is just, we don't even, who knows, you know? I mean, as mm -hmm. we all have known, this entire time, Elliot has been teased, like, or not teasing us, but he's been basically filling us in on like, hey, sorry, I've lost interest. My life kind of took a crazy thing. I don't know if I'll have time. So he's done this. So who knows? I mean, he could have also just been like, ah, I just don't want to do it anymore. I don't want to update it. I'm tired of all the emails. So there's so many things. There's no fina finality to any of it. And it makes it really, really entertaining. And I I, I can see how much to with... Did, did Candle Cove come after this or before this? Let me look real quick. So the story got, like I said, it started in 2009. Final update was right. 2011. It blew up. I was wrong in saying that it had its first wave in 2014 with YouTube channels. It actually got its first wave when someone posted it to 4chan's X board on September 9th of 2012. And when that happened, that's when people started to notice, started to go to the original blog site, whatever. I see. So 2012 was when it got popular. It was published in 2009 uh, on his website, on Chris Straub's personal website. Regardless if whichever one came first, I think that like... Either one could have been inspired by each other, but yeah. one thing I really appreciate about this is that it starts off and it kind of has some weird, creepy vignettes. But I'm do I'm I'm glad that we do get to kind of go in more of a narrative device of stepping away from like each post just being new entries. Which you know we, there there are a lot of entries of the tapes and stuff like that, but we get so much more out of just being able to get the narrator's perspective on things and being able to really feel enticed with this world. Like, I mean, one thing that I really appreciate about like some of the stuff that came after these were like really early creepypastas is people really taking time and like really getting into like the characters or especially our protagonists and stuff, not making it feel like it's just kind of a random blog post, but really like pushing the idea that like these blog posts can just, I mean, it can be a, a huge exposition dump for people. You know what I mean? Like, my favorite part of this whole thing was definitely running into the Beavis and Butthead looking kids and having that little urban legend uh, kind of pop up. Like, I I really enjoyed that, and I wish that there was just more um, to that. Which, granted, you know, this it, it, it flows so well. Like you're saying, if you didn't have the polo part, I think that, or the polo part, I think that this would be just such a well-paced story that just is just awesome. Just such a fun read, first off so casual and fun but part of me also because i'm kind of invested into it is just wishing that each one of these like we got to hear more you know even like some of these one thing i think would be kind of interesting i'm curious to hear what you think is um even getting to see more of these joke emails i uh, yeah yeah seeing what more people are saying even if it is just set dressing for the world Exactly. Even if it is just kind of, I want to get more and more into the psyche of having to read these as well. Like that, like building sympathy for Elliot and feeling as confused as he is, like sharing more of them, you know, Hey, here's a string of stuff, or even just being like, someone sent me this, it's getting really annoying or whatever. Like, I think that way, I feel like I would have been, it just, it's, it's just a giant teeter totter. It's just kind of going back and forth, whatever. I think that that's really fun. Really, really fun. I'm glad we read this one, man. This was fun. Yeah, it does go hard. There is one thing that's bothering me, though. I swear I remembered a different tape. There was an extra tape that I kept really? waiting for it to come up, and it's not. And it's honestly kind of freaking me out a little bit now. <laughs> Because I yeah, remember, night, night. you have your own personal thing going yeah, well, on. Yeah, because that's the whole plot, right? Like, oh, I forgot that I saw this as a kid, but I swear... There was a tape that the whole the whole episode was just hands. It was like just hands on camera, like talking like, oh, what do you want to do today? And then one of the hands oh, cuts the other with scissors. And you could hear like a muffled scream when that happens. As if like it's Mr. Bear holding the kid's hand and making him cut himself. Do you think um, that this could have been a tape, like a maybe it's a tape that I, isn't? I feel a like part I'm of the series. Insane. Hold on, I'm gonna I'm gonna find this out because I, I when, Cause, it, when it didn't happen, I'm like, oh, it must be Candle Cove. But I look it up, and that's not Candle Cove. Hmm. Hold on. <laughs> now I'm scared. Oh, I w I will mention while I'm looking. This actually got adapted in 2017 to an Amazon Prime series, a miniseries, or Amazon Video. 
But there were also a bunch, there's a ton of like alternate 1999 stories out there where like people wrote, oh, well, this is a lost Mr. Bear episode, or this is another booby episode, stuff like that. So I'm curious, I'm cu like, is there anything that we can research that shows that possibly why these were removed? Yeah, I think I'm so. I'm curious. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious too. Or maybe even somebody, if anybody in our comments knows as well, we'd love to pin or do anything too. I mean, like, just because that was the last booby entry there. So I'm curious to see like why. I feel like there's some creepypasta community lore here that I'm not privy to, but I want to know. I remember when that happened, when people started discussing the hand thing. I remember people saying, oh, that's similar to this other thing. But I don't know if it was straight up plagiarism or anything. If it was just another series about hand talking hands unless the story itself was ripped but hi so pretend detective windagoon here uh i've done some research online and i'm pretty sure i know what happened why i and likely some of you remember a different version of the story than the one we just read and all of this is just like offhand research i've done within a couple hours so if i'm wrong about any of this feel free to correct me in the comments below so as mentioned earlier, Camden Lamont is the original author of the 1999 story. He posted the story to his personal blog on November the 14th of 2009, again with subsequent updates coming out on the dates listed within this episode. However, it seems that Lamont wasn't really aware of creepypasta culture or of people, you know, copy and pasting horror stories around the internet. So he just posted the horror story as his own project to his personal blog, and that'll be the personal blog that we link in the description of this video. So that way, any traffic from this goes to the original creator. But it seems that after he had posted his story, people were taking that story and posting it to creepypasta boards without crediting him. Not only that, but they were adding their own additions to the story. And one of these additions is the talking hand show known as Booby that I mentioned a moment ago, which in itself is just a parody of an actual talking hand show called Ubi. Not only that, but one of the people who copied the story over to a creepypasta form added an extra episode of Paint with the Soul that was a one-for-one -one copy of an Alan Tutorial video, a popular YouTube ARG. In the following years, since the majority of people's interaction with the 1999 story was either through the creepypasta forums or through creepypasta YouTubers, everyone assumed these additions to be part of the original author's story. So when people started to recognize that Booby was just a low effort copy of Ubi and that the Paint with the Soul episode around Alan Tutorial was straight up plagiarism, they started to accuse the original author, Camden Lamont, of being the one to copy those stories for his own work. But like I said, Camden never put those into the story. It's the people who ripped his story and then re-uploaded it who added the not authentic parts. This also led to a lot of drama in like creepypasta communities around 2018 because Camden, who wasn't aware that any of this was going on, found out that all of it was going on at once and started to take down versions of the story that, again, stole his story and then added parts that made it seem like he was copying someone else's work. But people who didn't know the full story of that just assumed Camden didn't want people to talk about his plagiarism, which again, he never actually did. So Camden received a lot of hate because people thought he just stole other people's stories and then was trying to hide the evidence. So the version that we read today is Camden's original work as he originally wrote it, and all the stuff about plagiarism and whatnot are from people who ripped his story in the first place. Again, link to his original blog post in the description, and if I got any of this wrong, please let me know. You know, 1999, it was rad. I mean, very, very rad. Very I know rad. people people have requested this one in the showers, so maybe we'll you know maybe what? we'll hit the, the showers this next. Or kind of makes up for them requesting the thing in the basement. You know? I'm still, you know what? Whatever they requested is not our fault. Is all I have to say. <laughs> and this one, this one was luckily a strong one. Like I think it's it's awesome. Just a lot of cool influences in there, and it's just it's interesting to see these kind of internet stories and how they have, you know inspire each other. And it's cool, man. I'm I'm stoked on it. Yeah, me too. But w without further ado, I mean, that was 1999, ladies and gentlemen. As always, we request just be sure to listen to this on audio platforms if you can and review or, you know, give us a nice little thumbs up or a five-star rating. And also, 
If you have any story suggestions, please be sure to leave them down below. We do look at that, and we look at all the funny little fan edits as well. It makes, like I said, belly jiggling. It's very, very nice. I'm actually going to go clean my shorts because of the Elgato box dropping. That really, uh, <laughs> that got me pretty bad. It is a stinky mess in my pants right now from that, and I am uh, still shaking. <laughs> That's what you get. <laughs> it is what I get. I feel bad. But without further ado, thank you so much for watching Creepcast, and we will see you in the next one. See you in the next one, everyone. Uh, bye bye. Bye bye.